today. The Cubs are throwing their crown jewel as Tavares looks to mow down the Dodgers. Next. Let it Cinco de Mayo, and what a great day for it is Sammy Sosa bobblehead doll day. A big crowd on hand as the Cubs, with the best record in the National League, entertain the first place Los Angeles Dodgers in game two of a three-game weekend set. And if yesterday's pitching performance was any indication of what we'll see today, we're in for a whole lot of fun here on Fox Sports Net. Hello again, everybody, along with Dave Otto, Chip Carey. Welcome to a cool and blustery Wrigley Field where the Cubs, with the best ERA, best record, more strikeouts than any other team in the National League, do battle with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And Dave, when Don Baylor came here, he said he wanted to make Wrigley Field a big disadvantage for the opposition. Daytime baseball has not been kind to Los Angeles. Boy, and a big part of it in yesterday's ball game during the day was Kevin Tappany was outstanding. But the L.A. Dodgers' lowest batting average during the day at 210. So hopefully that will bode well for Julian Tavares in today's ball game. Yeah, Los Angeles had 36 hits in their series against the Reds. Only four yesterday as the Cubs pitching staff continued its masterful start to the 2001 campaign. And if you're going to beat L.A., you have to somehow find a way to contain the middle of their order, just like anybody else, but especially Gary Sheffield, who has been a longtime Cub killer here. Boy, no question about it. Sheffield, lightning quick bat. Can't let him beat you along with Green and Carroll. So those guys can thump in the middle of that order. But really, they haven't gotten production from the top half of the order, so hopefully you face these guys without anyone on base. Julian Tavares takes the mound for the Cubs. When that sinker ball is working, he can be very effective. And like Kevin Tappany yesterday, both he and Darren Dreifert are going to try to use the wind as their 10th defender. Well, no question about it. I thought Tavares last time out was wild in the zone. A couple pitches were up. His whole key is to keep the ball down. Now, Dreifert, on the other hand, you really have to make him throw strikes, get some deep counts early, get used to swinging the bat against him. Well, the Cubs going for their seventh series win of the year already, and it could happen against the L.A. Dodgers as Dreifert battles Tavares. But first, let's enjoy our national anthem. Oh, oh say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Well, that rendition of the National Anthem should get everybody's blood pumping. And hey, look at that. Sammy Sosa, indeed, the model for Sammy Sosa bobblehead doll day. A big crowd on hand. Cubs, Dodgers, first place baseball comes your way next. Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Hyundai, where driving is believing. Test drive one at your local Hyundai dealer today. White Hen Pantry. When you run out, run out to White Hen. CarX Auto Service. More than you thought for less than you'd think. CarX. Toyota. See your Chicagoland Northwest Indiana Toyota dealer today. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Never miss a genuine opportunity. AT&T Cable Services. Pennzoil. Protection under the toughest driving conditions. Your local area Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. And by Southwest Airlines celebrates 30 years of freedom. 30 years. One mission. Low fare. Share my determination. Feel my power. See my game. In 
the board of Active Women Everywhere, ERA presents the See My Game Sweepstakes. It's your chance to see the world's greatest women tennis players go head-to-head -head in San Diego, California at the WTA Acura Classic. Just stop by your participating cup foods and enter to win. And remember to watch the Acura Classic on Fox Sports Net, August 3rd and 4th. Nothing beats the fun and excitement of watching the Cubs in beautiful Wrigley Field. And you can be there. That's right. Tickets are still available for upcoming Cubs games. To get your tickets, just call tickets.com at 1-800-THE-CUBS. Head to the Wrigley Field box office. Punch in www.cubs.com. Or visit any Chicagoland Sears or Sears hardware store. Don't wait. Catch all the Cubs action firsthand and get to the game. Honey, did you get paper plates? You got ice, right? Ice. Sure, trips really beat up your engine, but Pennzoil with Pure Base is formulated to protect against the harshness of everyday driving. We can't change the way you have to drive, but we can protect you from it. What kind of steaks did you get? Stop and go. Protection from Pennzoil. Get ready for summer with a Pennzoil synthetic or synthetic blend oil change at Jiffy Lube and get $5 back. 55 degrees, winds out of the east at 14 miles per hour as the Cubs and Dodgers resume hostilities. Game two of this three-game set. Cubs won a 4-0, a four-hit shutout, the first of the year by the Cub pitching staff, by the way, as Kevin Tampany, Kyle Farnsworth, and Jeff Facero struck out 10 Los Angeles Dodgers to win game one of the set. So today, it's Julian Tavares against Darren Dreyford, another good pitching matchup. And if both men are on, you'd figure... You'd expect to see a lot of ground ball outs today, but only time will tell. Let's take a look first to the visiting Dodger lineup. Under their manager, Jim Tracy. Tom Goodwin gets his first start of the series. He'll be in center field. Mark Rudzelanek bats and plays second. Gary Sheffield having a terrific road trip up with Hitless yesterday. Sean Green hits cleanup in right field. Eric Karros, one of the all-time great Dodger sluggers, is at first base. Dave Hansen is the man at third. Pena will be behind the plate. Angel Pena, his name. Alex Cora, the shortstop, hits eighth, and Darren Dreyfuss on the mound. He will bat ninth. There's Jim Tracy, his first season as manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers, and Dave, in talking to him yesterday, this is a, a great baseball man. He spent an awful lot of time in the minor leagues, 15 years preparing for this job, seven in the minor leagues, one as a field coordinator, six years as a bench coach under Felipe Alou and Davey Johnson. And he knows full well the awesome responsibility he has sitting in the seat once occupied by Walter Alston, Tommy Lasorda, and Davey Johnson, among others. Boy, that Dodger tradition. It reeks of tradition, and, and Tracy's doing a good job so far. The one thing that is trying to change this ball club a little bit, last year the Dodgers were second to last in the amount of errors, and they really didn't generate a whole heck of a lot of runs on the base pads last year. Whole different camp this year with Jim Tracy at the helm, working on laying down bunts and getting the, taking the extra base. He said before the series started that little things are going to be very important for this team to win their division. And yesterday, really a case where the Dodgers didn't do the little things, and to the Cubs' credit, they took advantage and made L.A. pay very dearly for missing cutoff man, dropping pop-ups, not bunting in bunting situations. So we'll see if the Cubs can make them pay again here in game two. There's a look at Julian Tavares, and let's go around the horn and take a look at the defense behind him today. Of course, Sammy Sosa will be the man in right field for the Cubs. Damon Buford gets the start in center field. Rondell White patrols left. Ricky Gutierrez, again, the Cubs shortstop. Bill Miller is over at third. Eric Young at second base. Matt Stairs at first. And Todd Hundley, of course, behind the plate, the former Dodger. 
And a look at Julian Tavares leads the National League in earned run average with a 1.53 earned run average. He's won two, lost just one, and Don Baylor has to be delighted with his performance on the field. He's been great. You know, even though Julian got a loss last time out against the San Francisco Giants, still threw the ball pretty good. What Julian does a great job of up to this point is making big pitches with men on base. He'll throw a ton of fastballs in today's ballgame. Four seamer upstairs to right-handed hitters, and then also that two-seam sinker, which really is his money pitch. Sharp with that slider, good slider down, and every once in a while he'll mix in a changeup. And he'll face a Dodger lineup that's fared pretty well against him, albeit in some different locales. Tom Goodwin, a case in point, five hits and nine tries against Julian, so this should be another fun matchup today. Power pitcher against power hitters. Both Dreifert and Tavares like to sink the ball. The wind again out of the east, blowing in at Wrigley Field. So expect another low-scoring affair today. Tavares' his first pitch is a ball outside. Good one at 188. One home run, 10 driven in for Los Angeles. And that one taken right back up the middle. Buford comes charging and makes a good basket catch. One up, one down. Outfield, I would imagine, Dave, has the luxury of playing a little bit more shallow than normal. Sure, and as the season has progressed here, you're going to notice the Cubs outfielders, Rondell White, out in left field, are going to start playing a little more shallow. Early on in the year, playing deep, getting used to things, but now, well, you've got to take away those hits that dump in. So here's Grudzelanek. Grudzelanek at 309, five homers and 12 driven in. He had a base hit yesterday. Boy, what a game for the Cubs. I mean, that was just artistry with Chan Park and Kevin Tappany doing. Ark had to leave with two men on in the seventh inning. Back spasms felled him and his status day to day. And Cubs took advantage against the L.A. bullpen, although the runs, two of the four runs, were charged to Park and he got the loss. Right, Kevin Tappany throwing seven innings of shutout ball. Anytime Chan Ho Park is throwing the way he was yesterday, you know you're not going to get a whole heck of a lot of runs against him. The Cubs are fortunate to knock Chan Ho Park out of the ball game with back spasms. 1-1 one, one pitch. A little bit outside. Two balls and a strike. Cubs start the day two games ahead of the Reds and the Brewers. Milwaukee had to place Jeff Jenkins on the disabled list after that outfield collision down in Atlanta. We'll see them next. Chop toward third for Miller and foul ball. And Redzelanek will swing again. Reds are at home today and San Diego's beating them again. Well, that Padre team is pesky. They're in front three to nothing. That game's in the fourth. Good play by Bill Miller to go ahead and fire through to first. Let the umpires umpire. Go ahead and make the play. That's right. Carry it through. Don't rely on the umpire. Chip, I think the one thing with the Cubs up to this point in the season is they're winning those tight ball games. You didn't see that last year. Anytime you're going to go up against a guy like Chan Ho Park, you know that you got to play sound defensively, fundamental baseball. The Cubs did that yesterday, and they're probably going to have to do it again today with Dryford on the mound. Two balls, two strikes to Grudzelanek. Bases empty in the first. Crossfire, drill deep toward left field. Back goes Rondell White toward the well. He's got it. Wrong day, wrong spot. <laughs> two down. <laughs> if he hits it another three feet to the right, he might have a shot. But it started to get pushed toward the well, and Grudzelanek, a long fly out for round number two. Boy, Tavares drops down and Grudzelanek stomps on this, gets it a little bit on the end of the bat. But with that wind blowing in, stands it straight up. You're going to have to really hit one today. Well, here's the man you think is the key to the Dodger attack today, Gary Sheffield. Hitting 318 with eight home runs and 18 driven in. Look at Wrigley Field. Steve stands nearly full. A check swing into the seats. And strike one to Sheffield. Big giveaway day, of course. But how about the Cubs? 17 and 11. Best record in the National League. Best pitching staff in the National League. And in first place in the first week in May. Never too late to jump on the bandwagon. There's no sign that this is going to stop. And, you know, I think all of us get caught up in 
sometimes the way teams win games rather than the fact that they go ahead and win them. Mm -hmm. This reporter included. One ball, one strike. Two balls and a strike. Well, I think if you look at over the whole year on a ball club, your pitching staff has a tendency to remain more consistent than hitting. You're going to go through periods in a season where your hitting is just not there, and that's where the pitching staff's got to pick you up. A little squibber. And stairs get to it in time. Nope. There he is. It's two and two. I think that's a big reason why this Dodger ball club will be in the hunt all year in that NL West because of their pitching staff. Strong bullpen and probably one of the strongest starting rotations when, you know, Ashby is healthy. You got Kevin Brown, Chan Ho Park yesterday, and Dreifert today. That's a pretty solid four. That's a real solid oh. four. Two balls, two strikes to Sheffield. Tavares back to work. Paints the outside corner and struck him out. One, two, three, and out go the Dodgers in the first. Here come the Cubs at home. Hey, Prima Clark, get off the ice! More like Prima Donna Clark! Hey, does anybody know the Russian word for loser? It's Prima Clark! Ladies and gentlemen, visiting from Western Russia, the parents of right winger, Alex Prima Clark. Want to get away? Now you can. Fly Southwest Airlines for just $39 to $99 when you purchase by May 24th. You are now free to move about the country. to meet this Tracy Coleman. Kevin says she could be the one. Mom, <laughs> Dad, meet Tracy. Oh. I was expecting someone pretty. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the Last Word with Jim Rome. The only sports commentary that's truly brutally honest. Weeknights at 11.30 on Fox Sports Net. No score after a half inning. Let's go around the horn and check out the Dodger defense. Sean Green is the man in right. Tom Goodwin, a very fleet-footed center fielder. Gary Sheffield is in left. Alex Cora, the young shortstop from the University of Miami. Dave Hansen, the fifth third baseman L.A., is used with Adrian Beltre's sideline. Mark Rutzelanek, second. Eric Carros, the man at first. Angel Pena, the man behind the plate. Darren Dreifert is on the hill. You look at his lifetime numbers, Dave, six games under 500 for his career, but with his kind of stuff, you just forget about that and say, go get him every fifth day. Exactly, and as his career progresses, he's figuring out how to pitch because there's no question his stuff is outstanding. And he'll face Eric Young, the Cubs' second baseman, to lead things off. Dreifert with that good mid-90s fastball. Gets it over for strike one. Just easy cheese. Good live fastball. Dreifert just 28 years of age, and he'll be a mainstay for many years to come. And that's popped away by Young. No balls, two strikes. Young, the former Dodger, having a, another very solid season for the Cubs. Two home runs, ten driven in. Seven stolen bases in nine attempts this year. And he takes it right back up the middle on an 0-2 pitch. Dreifert. Left one in the happy zone, and Eric Young's aboard with his second hit of the series. And a look at the rest of the Cubs starting lineup. Young leads off. Ricky Gutierrez, a late move from the number six spot to number two, dropping Bill Miller into the third hole. He's eighth in the league in hitting. Sammy Sosa, the cleanup man in right. Then Rondell White, Todd Hundley, the former Dodger, Matt Stairs, Damon Buford, and Julian Tavares on the hill for the Cubs. Ricky Gutierrez is bat coming to life. Six hits in his last 16 tries. And for those who are watching around the country, when was the last time you could say that 
a Chicago Cub team six weeks into the season would be 13th in batting average but first in earned run average. That tells you a lot about the philosophical change this organization has taken in the last 12 months. Ball club has added some thump. It added a great defensive glove in Bill Miller over at third base. Bure and Tavares at the back end of the rotation have really solidified this team's most glaring weakness. All right, Chip, look at the Cubs rotation last year at the beginning of the year. Really only had three starters in that rotation. Gutierrez tries to punt, couldn't get it down. Kerry Wood was not healthy at the beginning of the year. Ismael Valdez was out, and they really had to go to war with Kevin Tappany and John Lieber in a cast of thousands. But now you have a set rotation, and what's been great for Don Baylor in this Cub club They've had this rotation from the beginning of spring training. Kevin Tappany, great outing yesterday. Bouncing back after a poor outing in Colorado. Night and day difference. Will Gutierrez sacrifice. Dodgers 1-0. Twyford steps off. The other big factor is the emergence of Kyle Farnsworth in that cup bullpen. He's been outstanding. And now with Tom Gordon back, a lefty-righty combination at the end that a lot of teams are envious of. No balls and strike, but he shows punt, and he missed it for strike two. And Ricky Gutierrez feeling comfortable in that two-hole, as he was most of last year in that two-hole, as you take a look at Kyle Farnsworth, who great outing yesterday, men on first and second, two outs, 3-2 count to Gary Sheffield. And a split-finger fastball. Sheffield had no chance. Two strikes to the Cubs shortstop, Ricky Gutierrez, and it scores first. And Ryford knowing the way the weather is at Wrigley Field today, one early run changes the entire tone of this ball game. Small ball, and, and Ryford has to go over there a ton just because he is fairly slow to the plate. Chopper toward Danson might be two. High for the second one on the first in time. EY did all he could do. Take out the second baseman. Uh, Ricky wraps into a 5-4-3 double play. Brian Hansen playing in the, on the grass. Gutierrez jam shot here. The whole key is to throw a strike to second base. Grudzelanek, one of those guys like Jeff Kent that will hold his ground at second base. There's nothing more important than proper nail care in the bullpen. That's got to be a fine and can't require. What do you think? <laughs> Miller with the eighth best batting average in the National League hitting 343 and a six game hitting streak for this guy. He has been better than I think anybody thought he could be with the Cubs. He's hitting for power. He's driving in big runs. He's caught just about everything there is over at third base. He switch hits and you talk about a quiet and very intense leader in your clubhouse. There aren't many better than Bill Miller. And he will play. Don Bayer will have to give him a day off every once in a while, but he wants to be in the lineup every single day. I think the big difference in Bill Miller this year, I think he's going to hit for more power just because of certain counts that he's going to look to pull the ball down the line. Such a great inside-out hitter. Go the other way, but certain counts, you can look for that inside fastball. He's worked it to 3-1. and one. Dreifert. Doesn't want to face Sammy Sosa. He is the one man in the Cub lineup that's really made him pay. It stands to figure. Drive for the low ball pitcher. Sosa loves the ball uh -huh. at the knees. Base is empty for the Cub third baseman. And Bill Miller coaxes the walk. So they will have to face Sosa. Drive for it will do it from the stretch with two outs in the bottom of the first inning. And our Mercedes Benz countdown to 400. He's five away. And one away from our colleague Joe Carter at 396. That's a lot of bombs, isn't it? Oh. Sammy's hit nine of them this year. He's driven in 23, hitting 250. But maybe the most impressive stat for Sosa is a 28 walk total in 28 Cup games. This is a man that walked 91 times a career high last year. Big swing and a miss for strike one. That's why Dreifert did want to put Miller on. Sammy's hurt him badly. Back 
Back up the middle. Dreifert speared it. Good play. And the first inning is in the books. Pitching matchup between the Cubs and Dodgers. One and two in the National League. And we're scoreless at the end of one. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Ultimate TV from Microsoft. favorite shows digitally so you can watch them whenever you want ultimate tv watch what you can do They drive a thousand miles a week and the gas mileage is outstanding. Kiplinger's personal finance says the Elantra is the best new car in its class. It comes with the freedom of America's best warranty and a long list of features including front and side airbags. It's the only car in its class that has them standard. It drove like a much more expensive car. The Hyundai Elantra at just $13,294, it's a solid value. Calling, yeah. The Hyundai Elantra at just $13,294, your test drive is waiting. Well, Cup fans, plenty of great tickets still available for the rest of the 2001 campaign. You can pick it up by phone, 1-800-THE-CUBS. You can stop by any Chicagoland Sears or Sears hardware or visit us on the Internet, www.cubs.com. Great promotions for the rest of this homestand, which concludes tomorrow, Cubs T-shirt day, as a matter of fact. We'll also celebrate the Topps 50th anniversary card set. Marty Banks, Billy Williams, Ron Santo will be honored as Sean Green gets the first pitch to second. A lot of ground outs so far today. One away in the Los Angeles second. In fact, we'll show you a sneak peek of one of those good-looking tops cards. There it is, Ernie Banks. That's Wednesday, May 6th. When we welcome the Houston Astros to town. Houston in next, then Arizona, then the Reds, then Milwaukee. One of the longest homestands of the year, May 15th through the 27th. So stop on by and come see your first place Chicago Cubs. One away for Eric Karros, hitting 260 with five home runs and 17 driven in. Karros, very quietly, one of the great Dodger sluggers in their franchise history. The seventh all-time in Los Angeles Dodger RBI annals with 857. Third all-time in home runs with 247. Well, he's consistent year after year. Where he's not consistent, though, is within a year, he will go through some streaks. The key is to catch him when he's not in one of those streaks. I caught the corner. Carlos went 0 for 4 yesterday. Hit a couple of line drives right at some people. Maybe that'll cool him off for he had a very good series against Cincinnati. And that one driven toward right center field. Sammy got a great jump. Good play. Two down. Boy, Sosa really gets a good jump here, as you mentioned, Chip. And Tavares going to a strike. That sinker down and in to right-handed hitters. And that's Carroll's lightning zone. But, boy, when you go strike down strength, as a pitcher, you've got to go to your strength. And his is certainly downstairs. Early on, we see that live sinker almost shoves down in the zone. Here's Dave Hansen. Many of you around the baseball world may not know it, but this guy is closing in on Dodger immortality. Why, you say? Well, he's only 15 career pinch hits away from Manny Moda's mark of 106 with Los Angeles. When they get Adrian Beltre back, Hansen will probably share time with him to start, you'd figure, and then when Beltre takes over the day job, they'll have a great weapon off the bench late. Hansen, one of the game's best pinch hitters. 
when he made the adjustment early on to that role coming up to the Dodgers at an early age sometimes that's difficult for a young player to assume that role but he fit right in 3-0 pitch to him and tomorrow is down and over we'd like to welcome our affiliate inside communications and their viewers in Rockford Illinois to Wrigley Field today where the Cubs in first place try to take two in a row from Los Angeles check swing little pop tough break for Tavares had him full but Hanson put lumber on the baseball and has the first Los Angeles hit boy 3 1 you're looking to take a good rip but he gets fooled by the outside sinker boy players today are some kind of strong if they just get their arms extended, even though it's a check swing, strong enough to get it out over that infield. So here's Angel Pena, the young Dodger catcher. Hitting 148 with a solitary RBI. This kid had a great minor league hitting career. And a diving stop by Ricky from his knees, tries to get his man and couldn't. So a check swing hit to left, an infield hit by Pena, and Gutierrez's great dive made Hanson stop at second. And Gutierrez really cheating up the middle for Pena. Tavares with that sinker, not expecting Pena to pull that sinker. Give some ground, but not enough juice to first base. Pena does not run well. However, that deep, no chance. Two on, two out for Alex Cora. Cora hitting 203, but only one hit on the road trip. ask a lot of folks around Major League Baseball there are a lot of teams that would like to get their hands on this guy or he can flat out pick the one thing is whether he's going to hit good enough in the big leagues and part of the reason why he was called up originally last year by the Dodgers was because of the way he was swinging the bat in triple A out of play for a strike one and one your count Now he's in the big leagues because of the way he can pick it. Tim Bolgar, Chicago product from Buffalo Grove on the disabled list right now with the bad hamstring. It looked like early on L.A. was going to platoon both Cora and Bogey. 1-1. One, one. And him off the front foot, 1-2. and two. You know, This is the type of guy, Chip, where you can show him your off-speed pitch, but I think you're going to get him out with that fastball in on his hands he can knock the bat out of his hands particularly with Tavares' fastball scoreless game we're in the top of the second this is where Julian all year long Chip has done well with men on base it seems like he turns it up just a little bit extra one two hot shot towards second Eli goes the short way in the ground ball Julian's best friend Dodgers get two hits leave them both stranded and Rondell White's coming up in the Cubs half of the second inning it's your chance to win tickets to Cubs and White Sox games on back-to-back -back games presenting the Fox Sports Net ultimate double header two grand prize winners will also win a luxury suite for a game at Wrigley Field and Comiskey Park to enter log on to sportshomechicago.com now a lot of things your dealer can do we can do rattle rattle thunder clatter boom 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 car X more than you thought for less than you'd think. Don't worry, call the CarX man. Right now, CarX is offering 50% off lifetime guaranteed brake shoes and pads. CarX. Hey, you. Yeah, I miss you too. It's been a while. Hey, Mom. No, I'll be home soon. Verizon Wireless. Our network covers more towns, more cities, hey, and more places than anybody else's in the country. So you know that just about anywhere your business takes you, you'll stay connected to your biggest fans. Verizon Wireless. Simple, affordable, national. Join in. 
It's a time for getting out, going places, and having fun. We've got what you need to get there, the full line of Chevy cars. Now get 0.9% APR financing on a 2001 Chevy Venture with over $4,000 in average finance savings. That's 09 on Venture. See dealer for residency and other restrictions. So get out there and make your money count at your Chevy dealer today. Don't miss tonight's episode of the Chicago Sports Report. Now you can get all the headlines, features, and highlights of Chicago teams an hour earlier. Tune into the only show that gives your home teams the coverage they deserve. It's the Chicago Sports Report tonight at 10 on Fox Sports Next. Scoreless game. We head to the second. Rondell White, Todd Hundley, and Matt Stairs are coming up for the Cubs on a chilly 55-degree day on Derby Saturday. 55 degrees, and you got two guys with nasty sinkers. It's not a fun day to hit. I like this matchup, though, right here. Rondell against Dreyfus. Rondell at 287 on the year takes a quick strike one. White Sox will be in Texas later on this evening. Tough break for them. Oh. They broke out the bats last night and then got rained out. And even tougher, all of us with the Cubs extend our sympathies to Frank Thomas for the sad passing of his father. He'll be away from the White Sox until they get back to Chicago. At least that's the word on the street. No balls, two strikes to Rondell. Craig's father has been sick for a while. And, uh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. And Frank's had a rough go over the last couple of years with his father. Rondell swings and misses, and Dreyford has his first strikeout of the game. Well, the whole key against Dryford is you've got to lay off that slider out of the zone. Easier said than done because he has a disappearing slider. And once he gets two strikes on you, he will bury it outside. Looks just like a fastball. The whole key is to make him throw that slider early on in the game. And then in the middle inning, starts flattening out. Todd Hundley, that's with one out. Boy, Todd was almost talking to himself yesterday. He walked up this morning before the game. He said, I just can't pick the right day to hit rocket fly balls here. Can I? This one hit high in the air to left. That one's going to be caught by Sheffield. There's out number two. He hit a ball yesterday that might have hit the Sears sign. <laughs> and the wind not blowing as hard as it's been blowing as it was, hard as it was yesterday. So he took a tough 0 for 3 and he is 0 for 1 today. Okay, is when you hit him. That's it. Check those flags every time you step up. Here's Matt Stairs. Matt at 216, no homers and two driven in. That slider, like Channel Park yesterday, really biting here early. And both Channel Park and Driver throw it so hard. And it looks just like a fastball. You can't gauge the speed. There's another one. Nothing in two. You hear players say, I look for the dot to check the spin of the baseball. I would imagine the problem is by the time you see the dot, it's already past you. Right, and then there's some guys with the slider. You look for a dot, and it looks like a cement mixer coming up there where it does isn't nasty. Those are the good ones to hit, but what dry for just disappears. He throws it right down the middle and just buries it down and in. And Matt Stairs, tough pitch to lay off. One ball, two strikes with the bases empty to the Cub first baseman. And Pfeiffer paints the outside corner. In, in, in. Then he gets him looking away. Two strikeouts for Pfeiffer and it's still scoreless at Wrigley Field. What are you doing? Who are you guys? got the wrong guy. Think this is harsh? Well, it's what you do to your car every day. All that stop and go driving is torture on your engine. But Pennzoil with Pure Base is formulated to protect against the harshness of all that stopping and starting. Stop and go protection from Pennzoil. Get ready for summer with a Pennzoil synthetic or synthetic blend oil change at Jiffy Lube and get $5 back. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Shoves and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. 
The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. Hello, I'm Dan Moriarty from Cool Shots, and this is NHL Breakout. Slap shot, score! Get here and test your slap shot. Get tips from the pros from last to right, last to right. And join in the fun. Take part in the best off-ice hockey festival anywhere for all ages. You have to get here when NHL Breakout rolls into town. Hosted by the Chicago Blackhawks, June 9th and 10th at Soldier Field. For more information, call 312-455-7017 or log on to NHL.com. We know sweat on hardwood, blood on ice, flesh on diamonds, rings and tires. We know hearts beat stronger, hopes hold harder. For victory, our souls we barter. We know karmic waves of pride and glory. And when pain is the only story, we know the tears you're concealing. You know we know. We know the feeling. Well, we told you, friends, one more game left on the homestand. It's tomorrow against the Dodgers, and the first 10,000 adults will receive an official Cubs gray T-shirt compliments of MBNA America. The Cubs will battle the Dodgers. First pitch at 120, and there are good seats still available. You can get them by calling 1-800-THE-CUBS or visit the Cubs at www.cubs.com. Be careful here. Here's Darren Dreifer, one of the game's best hitting pitchers. Already with a home run, that came in his last start. No decision against Philadelphia back on April 28th. Right there at the knees for a strike. Reifer with six career home runs, a lifetime 195 hitter. Well, that was going into this year, probably around 200 now. And unfortunately, two of those home runs came against the Cubs last year. He hit two of them. August the 8th, and he did it at Dodger Stadium, and they were not cheapies. They were bombs to left center field. Julian falls behind him, pitching carefully, three balls and a strike. Yeah, he's one of those guys that just saw him before the game, checking out his bats. You know, some pitchers go off into a corner and, you know, think about the game and what they got to do on the mound. The Dreifer was going through his bats, figuring out which bat he was going to use today. That tells you you're serious about your hit. 3-2. Yeah. He rallied back to get him. Good pitching by Julian Tavares. Dreifer is his second strikeout victim, and there's one away in the Dodger third. Boy, Tavares is sometimes difficult to pick up with that sinker because he almost short arms it, and you lose the ball out of his uniform. Throws that nasty fastball down and in. All right. And Feliz Cinco de Mayo. Happy May 5th. No better way than pick up a win. Jeez, Chip, you French, English, and Spanish. The English I'm not too sure about. No, I'm just <laughs> Two balls, no strikes to good one. And line to center field his first time up. One area where the Dodgers would like to see a little more improvement from Goodwin and Grissom is their on-base percentage. Both of them below 30% on base. Goodwin, in fact, at 233. Well, Chip, the first 13 games in the Dodgers season, neither Goodwin or Grissom had a walk. Two and two, your count. Well, that's the job of the leadoff guy is to get on, but... Certainly, some of those other hitters would like to see a few more pitches. Exactly. Two balls, two strikes, base is empty. Another scoreless tilt. Slap toward left field and a base hit. Pretty nice bat work by Goodwin. Just punched at that ball. And that's the third Los Angeles base hit today and that is vintage good one just throw laying the bat on the ball flicking it out to left field we got action over first base because he can scoop he's a perfect five for five in steals and with 311 lifetime he's 13th among active players in that category and again 
The first run is going to be the biggest run, at least you'd figure today. Here's Brett Zelanek. He fly to left his first time up. If you talk about Goodwin and Grissom struggling a little bit on base percentage, it's key for those guys to get into the deep counts. Let your teammates see some pitches. Right through there. Good pitch. Strike one to Grudzelanek. Heard a funny story yesterday about Ralph Gar. He was facing Nolan Ryan to lead off the ball game. 3-2. Nolan Ryan bringing the mail, throwing gas. Throws a changeup. 3-2. Screws Ralph Gar into the ground. Number two hitter said, Ralph, what's he got? Ralph goes, this game's over. <laughs> <laughs> Ground ball hit to the left side and through. Around second comes Goodwin. He's going to challenge White's arm. The throw is off the target. And taking second on the play is Greg Zelanek. So the speed of Los Angeles pays off in a big way. Red Zelanek with a base hit to the left side. Goodwin from first to third. Red Zelanek to second on the throw. And we've got third inning trouble. Boy, when Tavares' fastball is up in the zone. As you take a look at Rondell White. Good base running by Goodwin. Everything's in front of him here. So he knows he can take the extra base. Doesn't have to rely on the third base coach. Okay, there's good heads up play by Grudz Atlantic by taking the extra base. Well, here's where you don't want to see Sheffield do a whole lot of damage. Sheffield with 18 runs batted in. At second to Sean Green in the Dodger lineup today. He did, however, strike out looking to end the Dodger first. So two on with only one out. And he's using that anxiousness against him, isn't he? Well, one of the things that Sheffield does with men on base, he will look for that fastball in. Tavares recognizing that, throwing the breaking ball away. I think he can take a shot with Sheffield later on in the count in. Boy, Sheffield's got all that movement in his swing, in his setup. But once he gets that hitting position as the ball is delivered, he locks in. No balls and a strike. Knocked down by Hunley. Good play by Todd. One and one your count. Boy, and that's got to have confidence in your catcher to be able to block that baseball. And Todd does a good job of getting to his knees and just smothering it. That's a big part of Tavares' game, throwing that slider down in the dirt, trying to get some swings. One ball, one strike to the Dodger left fielder, Gary Sheffield, who again steps out. Over but low, two and one. You've got Sean Green waiting to hit next. Sheffield, one for seven against Tavares, including the strikeout today. Is ready to go. Crossfire. He couldn't stop himself. And it's two and two. Well, Tavares will drop down every once in a while, Chip, with that breaking ball. Big difference now is Tavares will also drop down and throw his fastball. Sometimes hitters, when they see a guy drop down, they're looking breaking ball. But now he's got two pitches from down on him. Two two. Bates the corner. Great pitch by Tavares. Wow, he had Sheffield totally confused. Big second out. Well, he pulled the string early on, throwing a couple breaking balls to Sheffield. Then he comes back with the gas. Todd Huntley set up perfectly on the outside corner. So that takes the double play out of order with two outs. But it does bring up Sean Green, a very dangerous left-hand hitter. Green rolled out to second his first time up. He's got 20 RBIs and a 291 batting average. Green got off to a torrid start last year with Los Angeles. In fact, he was on a pace to hit over 30 home runs and drive in more than 120, but hit just 239 the finals of the year. 
again you have to figure perhaps that part of that was as an American League player coming over to the National League for the first time no one really knew how to get him out but then the book was passed along to everybody else and they started to find the holes in his swing and I think for the most part trying to justify his salary was pressing big swing and a miss Boy, that's a great pitch in that situation at Green because Green is looking to take that fastball the other way, ground it out in the second inning. Trying to stay back going the other way. Tavares pulls the string, throws a changeup, gets him out on his front foot. 2-1. Missed outside with ball three. Eric Karros is waiting next. Green last year, some said he had a bad year. Well, he hit 24 home runs, drove in 99 stole 24 bases walked 90 times you can do a whole lot worse than that believe me the 3-1 pitch and he lost him and the bases are loaded that's the first Tavares walk and we've got to face Eric Karros now with the bases full and two men out the discipline by Green and now it's righty versus righty here Carroll's with 17 RBIs. Hit a fly ball to right his first time up. No place to put him. And Julian just missed inside ball one. That's right through there. Good pitch. It's one and one. Look at that. 99 career at bats with the bases loaded and 100 runs driven in. 1-1. One, one. Good backhand stop by Todd. That could have posed trouble. Two balls and a strike. But Todd really moving his feet well today. It's the toughest pitch to block. Fastball away. Got to get down in a hurry. Think about Tavares with men on base. It's a little bit extra on his fastball. 2-1 pitch. Carroll's chased. He likes that ball down and in. That's where it was, and he yanked it foul 2-2. Two and two. Boy, most guys, usually the left-handed hitters like the ball down and in. Carroll's good low ball hitter down in the zone. I'll tell you what, though. Tavares, if he tries to elevate him also, make sure that thing is up. So he's battled back to an even count. 2-2. Two and two. Base is loaded. Tavares crossfire, and he couldn't get... Eric to nibble at the base. So now the runners will move with two outs. 3-2 count to the Dodger first baseman. Best scoring opportunity for either team so far today. If you can throw that breaking ball 2-2, you can throw it 3-2. Let's see what he's got in mind. Runners lead the 3-2. There they go. He got it. What a job. He strikes out the side. Two hits and a walk, and the Dodgers leave the bases loaded in the third. He's amazing. Polyunsaturated. P O ginger vitis. G pungent. P U N G halitosis. A hyperventilate. B I H Y U T I N N T D. Sweet dreams. S -W -E. There's a better way to get to Washington, D.C. Fly to Baltimore, Washington International on Southwest. You are now free to move about the country.
support of active women everywhere, ERA presents the See My Game sweepstakes. It's your chance to see the world's greatest women tennis players go head-to-head -head in San Diego, California at the WTA Acura Classic. Just stop by your participating cup foods and enter to win. And remember to watch the Acura Classic on Fox Sports Net, August 3rd and 4th. It's a shootout between AL Power and Frank Thomas is the Sox power source. A-Rod needs the Rangers' high-priced offense. White Sox Rangers, tomorrow at 1.30 on Fox Sports Net. And Dave Otto, this guy's got ice water in his veins. Got me look at our Mercedes moment. Well, it just paints Gary Sheffield away with the fastball. There's a slider away to Carroll. Screw the breaking ball, 2-2. Turns around, throws it again, 3-2. Well, let's get some runs now. Julian's given the Cubs uh, another big lift today. And Buford, Tavares, and EY are going to work against Darren Dryford. Another classic pitching duel here at Wrigley Field. Cubs and Dodgers, game two over the weekend. Dryford misfires outside for a ball. Good news out of Cincinnati. The Padres beating the Reds 3-0 after six. Mets over Arizona 4-1 after six. Hot shot to the left side. Cora gloves, grabs, he goes, he couldn't get it. Buford legs out, infield hit. He's starting to find some holes in that batting average and his confidence rising and give him credit. He's worked awfully hard to rediscover the stroke. And he's getting that fastball in, Chip. And he's pulling the ball, finally getting his hands up in a good hitting position. And against a guy like Dryford, who's got great fastball inside, able to turn on it. Cora goes through the hole good. But Buford just outruns it. Well, on April 29th, Buford was hitting 068. With that infield hit, he's hitting 172. So he's picked up 100 points in a week in his batting average and now has a five-game hitting streak as a result. So here comes Tavares, who handles the bat exceedingly well. He's got three sacrifices, only one strikeout. And you'd figure he'd be bunting here. He did. Dreifert from his knees made a good stop. Sacrifice works. To second goes Buford. Another little fundamental play that could mean big things for the Cubs today. Boy, move along. Sometimes Tavares will try that bunt. Try and bunt past the pitcher. As you look at the infield defense. With Hanson playing back. Dreyford makes the play. Well, Dreyford's a pretty good athlete bouncing around. The whole key with that bunt is to get the bat head out in front of the plate. And just deaden the bat. As Tavares did. You know, pitchers work on that every day in spring training and then during batting practice every day before the regulars hit. Now help yourself out. Come on, EY. How about a base hit here? He's already got one of those today. Good speed at second. Scoreless in the third. Dreifert set to go. And he misses with ball one. Again, yesterday in the ball game, the Dodgers missed a cutoff man on a throw to the plate. Decided not to bunt with Chan Ho Park at second base and nobody out in a scoreless sixth inning. Eric Karras and Mark Grudzelanek couldn't handle a windblown pop-up. Sosa had a base hit, and then the Cubs scored three times. So it was a day where when the defense has a, another helper in Mother Nature, the wind blowing in, just like today, if you can get an early run, you can really put the squeeze on the opposition. And I think that's going to be the big difference for the Dodgers this year. Ten games over 500 last year. They had some horses, but if they do the little things, which they did not do yesterday, it'll be in the hunt in the West. Downstairs, two balls and a strike. Dodgers at 17 and 12 this year are 9 and 9 in their division. The National League West. The Cubs at 17 and 11 have the best record in the league. And the reason why these teams are Leading their divisions is very simple. We'll show you in a moment. First, the 2 1 pitch to EY. He checked it or did it? Nope. They say he went around 2 and 2. You're looking at the number one and number two pitching staffs in the National League. 
Now overall, the Cubs starters are number one. The Dodgers three. No surprise, Atlanta's number two without John Smoltzy. But from top to bottom, the Cubs number one. And that's the reason why Johnny Oates is no longer the manager of the Texas Rangers. 2-2. Two -two. Go that time. Yeah, they say he went. Don't know about that one. Dan Iasagna says he couldn't stop himself, and I think EY's got a pretty good argument. We have the benefit of the replay. The umpire doesn't. Let's take a look. Whereas EY got a hanger first time up against Dreifert. Dreifert buries the slider down and away. All right, tough to stay back on that slider. Well, I think the umpire might have gotten that one right. Unfortunately, EY thought he checked it, but no such luck. So two outs now. Gutierrez the batter. Dreifert jumps ahead of him. We're in the third inning in Chicago. Cubs and Dodgers scoreless. Damon Buford with an infield hit was sacrificed to second. And now the Cubs number two hitter Ricky Gutierrez will try to drive him home. All one strike one. When Tom Goodwin out in center field plays an extremely shallow center field. Ricky Gutierrez as of late even with that open stance, taking a shot the other way. 1-1 one, one pitch. Missed outside. Good eye. Close call. 2-1 your count. Boy, there's a buzz around the ballpark, isn't there? <laughs> well, there's a buzz in that clubhouse also. Guys chirping in that dugout. Really into the ball game. That one hung up there and Ricky ripped it foul. Two balls, two strikes. It's hard to believe this is already our 29th game of the year. Flies by when you're having fun. Sure. Players will tell you that too. Buford trying to stay loose out at second. Well, it'd be nice to cash this one in with two outs. Point Dreifert with that good loose arm. That's one of the things that's impressed me about him. His fastball jumps out of his hand because he holds the ball loose, and just drives the baseball to the plate. When he gets a little out of whack, though, gets some pitches up in the zone. Two two. Real good and back by Gutierrez continues. He stays alive here. And that's what you got to do. A right-handed hitter like Ricky Gutierrez. Take a shot going the other way because he's going to throw that slider away along with that fastball outer half. And if he comes in, well, just try and fight that pitch off and then get a pitch out over the plate where he can drive it to right field. Two balls, two strikes. Big lead at second. And the good at bat continues. Bill Miller is waiting on deck for the Cubs. For those of you watching in our New York and Baltimore audiences today, Yankees are happy. They lead the Orioles 4-2. That game now in the bottom of inning number five. All the rest of the AL action is a little bit later on. The 2-2 again. Dreifert got him. Boy, he's tough. So is Tavares. Each pitcher with four strikeouts, and the scoreless matchup continues. Expanding the narrow pipeline information passes through. AT&T's broadband technology is removing the obstacles that keep data, voice, and video from moving freely. 
coming through. Mercedes M-Class has been acclaimed as the vehicle most suited for use in any environment where people live. And one environment where they would desperately want to. For the first time ever, own the Man of Steel on DVD with invincible special features. Superman the Movie. Own it on video cassette and DVD. You're watching Fox Sports Net. Well, the Cubs will celebrate a very special day tomorrow. Third anniversary of Kerry Woods' 20 strikeout performance against the Houston Astros. He wasn't filthy that day. He was dirty. So that, that leads to our Aflac trivia question. Tomorrow's the third anniversary, as we told you, of his one-hit game against the Astros. Yeah, they had one hit. Which Astro had the hit? Here's Dave Hansen. I'm guessing it was not Derek Bell. You're, well, that's very true. The funny thing about that play was it was a questionable hit. Do you like the hint? Sure. The man who has the hit is in uniform in the ballpark today. Hanson has one of the four Dodger base hits. And we're already in the fourth. Scoreless game. One ball, two strikes. Is he active? Yep. I was going to say Tim Bogart. Nope. He's DL. Nope. One ball, two strikes to Dave Hansen. Bases clear. And Julian misses outside, two and two. We saw Mac Newton on the field today. Well, you got to give him a big pat on the back. He's done a, a great job. With his fitness, his conditioning program, his mental outlook as well. And Hansen couldn't stop himself, and he's down on strikes. Five of those for Tavares and one away. Hanson talking to himself as he takes a right turn. Take a look at Tavares' change-up grip. Throws it just like a fastball. Turns it over, runs it away to left-handed hitter. Angel Pena in infield hit his first and only time up. This one right to Bill Miller at third. Boy, he's as steady as they come. Two men down. But we're hoping Mac Newton's going to come up and, and talk to us about really what he did in spring training because I think to say that he just worked out this team and gave them a bunch of exercises and just talked to them with the use of a wireless microphone about positive thinking doesn't really do the job, the service that it deserves because he really believes in the program and I think we'd all learn a little something from him today. So... Hopefully he'll join us sometime in this fourth inning. We invited him up. Well, and certainly the physical part is important as the Cubs have, knock on wood, had a pretty good string here, relatively injury free. You really got to stay on his program. I had him in the early 80s or mid 80s. And it's something where you work out hard with him in spring training. And as a player, you sort of lose it during the year. And it's important that Don Baylor does get Matt Newton out here at least once a month to maintain that program because it works. It's like a 2100 inning tune-up. That's right. <laughs> or 200 inning tune-up as it were. As Cora takes a strike. This is the guy Tavares wants to get with Reifert waiting on deck. He'd love to start the fifth inning with the opposing pitcher. He's got him set up. One ball, two strikes. Boy, you talk to Mac, you can't help but coming away feeling good about everything. He's just as upbeat as as promised. I don't think he has a bad day. Well, he's got seventh degree black belt in Taekwondo. If he was, you aren't going to argue with him. Are you? Two balls, two strikes. That just missed. 
focus on not only the physical part, but I think the mental part, as you mentioned, Chip, is really valuable to a ball player. Not only dealing with one of the big issues with ball players is dealing with issues off the field. And he gives you tools to deal with those. If you show up at this ballpark and every day is not rosy, and you're dealing with adversity every day, and how you handle that adversity and go out there and just completely focus. We see this early on with Julian Tavares, perfect case in point. Had some problems in San Francisco, but he's between the lines. He's going out there, and he's just battling. And he got his man. Six strikeouts for Tavares, and the Dodgers go one, two, three in the fourth. Stay tuned, folks. Sammy Sosa's coming up second. You know, I don't want what happened to Sue to happen to me. You mean when she got hurt? I mean after no supplemental insurance. No what? Applied. It covers the stuff regular insurance doesn't, like laws pay and other expenses. What does? Applied! Oh! And what can I get you, sir? Applied! Applied. Without it, no insurance is complete. Applied! Oh! Chicago has a nightly sports report dedicated to hometown teams and hometown highlights. Your teams, your town, your show. The Chicago Sports Report, tonight at 10 on Fox Sports Net. Carl Malone was a simple country kid when he landed in Utah. He thought Utah was in Europe. He broke down racial barriers and found a new home. He helped to make a large part of the community colorblind. Only to be attacked by the people he thought of as his own. People say, oh, Carl's an awful time and all this. I have feelings. Warriors have feelings. Carl Malone, Beyond the Glory, tomorrow at 8 on Fox Sports Net. This isn't your ordinary summer camp. Black Hawk Youth Hockey Camps are a pro sports experience for kids. Meet heroes like Troy Murray and Billy Gardner. They know what it takes to make it. Learn from professional coaches, nutrition counselors, and fitness experts. Develop your skills with up to three hours of ice time a day. Black Hawk Hockey Camps are open to Mike through Phantom Boys and Girls and run at nine Illinois locations during July and August. Call 773-929-2242 to register. Black Hawk Hockey Camps. It's time to break the ice. And Phil Miller, Sammy Sosa, and Rondell White are coming up. First, let's revisit our AFLAC trivia question. 20 strikeouts for Kerry Wood three years ago tomorrow. Now, do you need another hint? Last name? <laughs> I don't think I can go that far. Come on, you, it's Ricky Gutierrez who played uh, with the Astros that day. And here's a look at the play. A third inning single that pissed off the glove of Cup third baseman Again, at the time, Kevin Ory. Nice. Long outing for him to the left side, off Ory's glove into left Ooh. field for a base hit. Well, that was the first breaking ball that hung oh, it was there. Bill Miller. Bill, <laughs> Bill Miller sucks that up, doesn't he? Yeah, at the time, thought Ory could have been charged with an error. He had just a couple of steps to go, but Ricky will tell you to this day, it was a screamer, a no doubt about it, base hit. Oh. But that was the only hit for the Astros that day. As Miller digs in it. And had it been a no-hitter, it would have been the most dominating pitching performance ever. Oh. All those strikeouts, and still was, one of the most dominating performances in Cub history. Several no-hitters, near-perfect games, of course. But that one, one for the ages. Miller walked his first time up. And looks at a pitch just off the outside corner. Two balls and a strike. Hey, he's here. Mac Newton's joined us. I'll tell you, it's, it's like seeing Ernie Banks, always with a smile <laughs> on his face, isn't it? <laughs> what do you say, partner? Yeah, great to be here. Great to have you upstairs. You Miller. got a great view, man. Yeah, sitting too shabby. Miller ricochets that one off one of the seat backs. We were talking about it earlier. For those who weren't around the Cubs every day, who didn't see the the regimen you put guys through to call it just an exercise program or talk about it as a positive thinking exercise really doesn't do the whole program justice we thought maybe you can do a better job than we can at describing what exactly it was that you did and are doing now <laughs> what did i do in spring training what a question actually what we're trying to do is get them ready to play 160 actually 180 games a season so we're talking postseason we're talking playing in october and we got to start of course by getting them physically ready. 
I don't think we've had a muscle pull yet through all the spring That's training right. and the season. Not one player. That two, way, that two, way. Two, two to Miller, I beg your pardon. Three balls, two strikes. That way Don Baylor can make his moves because all the players are available. Now, attitude is really an important key because a lot of players with a lot of talent don't play that talent level because they don't know how to control their attitude. So part of my job was to get the, the positive expectancy, in other words, a positive attitude. Ball four to Bill Miller. He walks for the second time, and that brings up Sammy Sosa with one on and nobody out. We've got some shots of you working out with the team today. And you know, the business of baseball, you've been around it a long time. Sometimes it's a very closed box as far as thinking is concerned. Yeah. Your method, your routine is something rather unorthodox. How hard was it for you to be able to come to the Cubs and Don Baylor and Andy McPhail and say, look, guys, I really believe in this thing. It's going to work. Actually, they came to me because Don Baylor was with me my last, his last two years as a player in Oakland. And he saw the effect that I had with the Oakland A's and what I was able to do with them. How about the players? Because obviously they have their own way of doing things and skepticism is a natural thing for a, a human being when they try something they're not used to. You're absolutely right. I mean, for a Major League Baseball player to deal with someone like me, they've never seen anything like this before. That's not something they really want. But um, we had a couple guys, Todd Van Poppel for one, who was actually with me in Oakland his first couple of years. And of course, um, Rene Latchman was with me there. And so, so that was some experience with, uh, with with what I bring. No balls and a strike to Sammy. Up and in. Well, Matt, one ball, wish, one strike. I wish I was still on your program. I had you on the Oh, yeah, also. Dave Otto. I need you. I, need, I pulled a groin up in the booth the other day. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> I forgot to mention Dave Otto was with me in Oakland. Yeah, well. look what you did for him. He yeah. stuck up here with me. <laughs> One ball, one strike. We're visiting with Mac Newton. The pitch to Sosa. Oh, what a rip he had, man. He just missed that, baby. One ball, two strikes. But it has to be rewarding for you to come back to the ballpark and see the results. I mean, you see these guys in the clubhouse. It is a totally different atmosphere here than it was in, in the year 2000. Well, you know, I'm not really surpri surprised. I'm pleased. But... It's, it's what we expected. This is exactly what we expect to happen. The reality is, is we haven't really gotten started yet. We haven't gotten into, we're still learning, in other words, we're practicing work. We're still learning the lessons that we're going to need later on in the season. I like the way we're practicing so far, man. Well, Best record in the National League. That's Nothing exactly wrong with that. right. But what I'm saying is, is that when you add the skills of this particular team with a powerful attitude where they feel destined to succeed, you're going to see some more on the results. Ryan Runke's hollering at somebody on that Dodger bench. Doesn't want anybody questioning balls and strikes now. And Jeff Kellogg, the second base umpire, comes creeping in just in case someone was going to pop out of that Dodger dugout. Two balls, two strikes, scoreless game. Drama heightening at Wrigley Field. Miller at first, the pitch to Sammy. Swamp grim, deep left field. Wow, look at that baby go. It's way. the breaking ball when his slider is down nasty but when it's up very hitterish and Sammy Sosa got a hanger so Joe Carter wasn't here to see Sosa tie him but that's number 396 in his career and it was a no doubt or an absolute stream of milk out on the way from Avenue in left center field and the Cubs have jumped in front of Dreyfus by two now Rondell White up the middle. Cora can't get back. You have to visit more often. This is pretty fun. I love this. It's like the hitting is contagious. It's like good attitudes. Good attitudes is contagious. You see it down in the clubhouse. That Heineken home run replay. A mammoth shot by Sosa. His 10th of the year. And it gives the Cubs a lead over Dreifert. Now Pena out to try to settle down Darren Dreifert. Mac, I thought what, what was critical in spring training for you is to get Sammy Sosa on board, and he took to it immediately, did he not? That was that, that surprised a lot of people because people were worried that Sammy would not take well to the more disciplined approach that I bring to stretching and, and conditioning. But, you know, like you said, Dave, he, he just grabbed onto it immediately. 
first day. Todd Huntley the hitter and he takes a strike over the outside corner. So how often do you now expect to be joining the ball club and how frequently will you be doing your tune ups for lack of a better way of. of oh, I love that. Take that. That's exactly what they are. Two chip. Um, you can expect to see me a couple times a month actually. Here in, uh, in Wrigley Field and on the road especially on the West Coast. Road. Huntley drives that ball deep toward left. Sheffield back. That ball is gone as well. Huntley goes the other way and the Cubs lead by four and Dreyford falling apart before our very eyes. Boy, what an improvement in Todd Huntley going the other way off of Dreyford's fastball tailing away. Talk about someone that's making some adjustments at the plate and Chip all of a sudden we are seeing the ball travel the other way. The wind shifting a little bit blowing from right to left and Todd got it up in the jet stream. That is the wind tunnel at Wrigley. If you can go to left center and that's why the Cubs are hoping Matt Stairs will be able to do that sometime this summer. The ball jumps out that way regardless of the direction of the wind. And hey, buddy, I just caught a home run. You're right. A rocket shot off the bat of Todd Hundley, and the Cubs have scored four in the fourth. Well, the whole key here is to get Dreyford up in the zone. We saw early on everything was downstairs. Now all of a sudden that fastball is elevated, and Todd gets a high fastball here. Boy, look how he sticks his nose right on that pitch. He drives it the other way. Sheffield gave a valiant effort. But into the first row of seats, and Todd Hundley has his fourth home run, and that is his first home run at Wrigley Field as a Cub. And the first of what we hope will be many, many more. So a four-run fourth for the Cubs, still nobody out. And here's Matt Stairs. Right. Now that guy doesn't need Mac Newton's program. He's already very happy. He's got a lot of positive things. He's, look at him. He's pumped. He's got that ball. He's happy. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes. Well, Mac, obviously the results speak for themselves. You have to have a good foundation upon which to build. You do. This locker room, the most cohesive since I've been here, really. Great group of guys. Everybody gets along, and certainly winning does nothing but help that. Well, you know, winning is a tradition Win that uh, that we're looking to establish. I mean. This team has a chance to break a 93-year-old losing tradition here at Wrigley Field. And, I, I mean, I'm trying to instill a feeling of belief from the fans, uh, management, uh, groundskeepers, everyone, that this team is a winning team. And, like I, think, like I say, belief creates the actual facts. So if we believe it first, I think it's going to come about. People are saying, well, we'll wait and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Hey, let's believe it's going to happen and then watch it happen. We said earlier the it's bandwagon's not too full. It never is too full. No. The stairs get on it right now. Is <laughs> aboard with another walk. That's the third of the game for Darren Dreifert. The other great adage in this sport is luck is the residue of design. And uh, certainly your designs have worked out very well, Mac. And good luck to you the rest well, of the thank year. You. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you letting me come up to the booth. You guys got a great view up here. This is fantastic. Yeah, Dave charges rent, but his bosses <laughs> right? don't know That's much a, about that. It's a great so. view. You can get you can see the whole park. It's beautiful up here. Mac, it's fantastic. best Thanks wishes. A lot. We'll see you Thanks tomorrow, okay? okay yeah. All right, Mac, let's I'll keep the good to you again. Keep the good times rolling. Hey, your good luck today. One inning tomorrow be perfect. That's all right. We'll take it. Right, One on, still with nobody out, stairs aboard, and Damon Buford in the batter's box. Boy, this has been, unfortunately for Darren Dreifert, the pattern throughout his young career. He's got great stuff, but every now and then somebody connects, and the runs come against him in bucketfuls. And Greg Olson trots down to the Dodger bullpen. He'll start to loosen up. Hot shot toward Hanson at third. Good play there. Second base one, first base two. Base is empty, and now two men out. Our thanks again to Mac Newton. What do you know? He takes off the microphone and we hit no double play. Maybe there's something to it. <laughs> Keep him in here. Well, even though that's a double play, I like the way Damon is swinging the bat. Getting on top of that high fastball early on in the year. Was not able to get after that pitch. And now he's keeping his hands high. Just it's a bullet to third. Julian Tavares a sacrifice his first time up. Olsen continuing to warm up. Dreifert spots due up first in the fifth, so this might be the last man he faces if Tavares makes the final out of the frame. But a walk, a two-run homer, a single, and a two-run homer have busted this game wide open. Four to nothing Cubs.
one, Chip. You're right. With a guy like Dreyfus, who's got great stuff, there's a point in the ball game where you can give it up in a hurry. This, this is the inning, and the Cubs swinging the bats good, getting some pitches upstairs against him because when he's down, his ball is alive. Usually a pitcher, when he is down, he's getting great extension. With that great extension, that's when his ball just disappears down. Got to get him upstairs. Dreyfurt's given up six home runs on the year, two of them today. And he just got Julian Tavares. But what a fourth inning. Two home runs. A two-run shot by Sosa. A two-run shot the opposite way by Todd Hundley. And after four, the Cubs lead the Dodgers four to nothing. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by IBM, taking e-business and your business to the next level. There's a tsunami on the horizon, a gigantic wave of epic proportions. It started with computers, swelled into websites and PDAs. Now smartphones, smart cars, smart buildings, and it's headed right towards you with a force and power untold. It's the future of e-business. Do you have the right software? Surf's up. It's a different kind of world. You need a different kind of software. Hey you. Yeah, I miss you too. Been a while. Hey mom. No, I'll be home soon. Verizon Wireless. Our network covers more towns, more cities, hey and more places uh -huh. than anybody else's in the country. So you know that just about anywhere your business takes you, you'll stay connected to your biggest fans. Verizon Wireless. Simple, affordable, national. Join in. Well, it's that time of year again, and you're stuck in the heat watching the mercury rise. Want to make sure that doesn't happen to your summer? Get you and your friends enter to win really cool Miller Time trips like these in our Miller Lite Get the Good Summertime Promotion. Pick up your Miller Lite Get the Goods entry card wherever you see this display. What are you looking at? You're watching Fox Sports Net. Aguil Ordonez and the White Sox trying to get back on track. They battle A-Rod and the Texas Rangers. Coverage starts with Prime Co. Chicago Sports today. It's the White Sox and the Rangers tomorrow at 1.30 on Fox Sports Net. A four-run fourth for the Cubs. And everything looking beautiful at Wrigley Field so far. Trying to win our seventh series of the year behind Sammy Sosa, behind Todd Hundley. And behind Julian Tavares, who's thrown a gem. He struck out six men and has given up only four Los Angeles hits. And one of the things that Julian has done now that he's in a starting role and really in the second half last year with the Rockies is he was coming out of the bullpen for the Rockies. He was fastball slider. But as a starter, you need that third pitch, something off speed. We've seen that against the Dodgers so far in this ball game. His ability to throw that change up for strikes. In fact, the last two men he struck out were on the change. Dreifert stays in the game and takes a quick strike. Minnesota Twins, no longer the biggest surprise in baseball. They're for real. However, one thing you can't help is injury. And they've suffered their first big injury of the year. As their DH, David Ortiz, is out six to eight weeks with a broken wrist. Incredibly, he broke his wrist sliding into home plate. He had an at-bat after that slide where he hit a home run. So he hits a home run with a broken wrist. And he leaves hitting 311 with six home runs for Minnesota. That's a, a big piece of their puzzle, and they're going to miss him. 2-1 to Dreifert. Back to the mound, Tavares. Nice casual underhand flip to first. He doesn't throw particularly well over there. But he got Dreifert with ease, and there's one man out. It's either a strikeout or a ground out in this game from Tavares. Tavares keeping the ball on the ground. One thing that Tavares has struggled with this year is throwing over to first base. So when you do struggle throwing over, you take the easy way. 
Back to the top we go. Tom Goodwin, first pitch swinging, roller right to second. That's what we talk about when you say on base percentage. You've got struggling, he had to hit. When you come up and hit the next pitch, Cubs very happy that Goodwin made that decision. Two quick outs. Exactly. You usually want, as a pitcher, you make it out, you want your hitter to give you a little bit of time. If you're not going to take your time getting up to the plate, you saw Ricky Henderson do that for the Padres in the series. If the pitcher makes it out, he takes his time getting up to the plate. Let that pitcher get back in the dugout. Now, Dreyford spent a long time on that mound in the bottom of the fourth inning. All of a sudden, swings at the first pitch. Boy. Reds Atlantic one for two, but he hits with the bases clear and two out here in the top of the fifth inning. Dave Otto, Chip Carey, and our entire Fox Sports Net crew. The Cubs trying to thump the Dodgers again. They shut them out by the same score yesterday. Hot shot to third. Miller backs up. Look at how accurate he is. Right on the money. Three up, three down in the fifth. Tavares continues to cruise against the Dodgers. you in part by Aflac. Without it, no insurance is complete. Heineken, it's all about the beer. Heineken. And by your local Mercedes-Benz Center. Beautiful look at downtown Chicago and a 4-0 Cub lead as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. And the top of the order is looking for more against Darren Dreifert. It's time for our Toyota fan of the game. Today's Toyota fan of the game is Melanie Wildern from Chicago. If the Cubs score in the fifth, Melanie wins a Toyota Fox Sports Net prize package, including a hat, T-shirt, and pair of tickets to a future Cubs game. Young starts it off nicely. Opposite field single. Sixth Cub hit. And his second of the day. So all of a sudden, Dave, the Cubs bats, as we alluded earlier, starting to gain confidence, gain success, and put up numbers. Boy, and at one time, Cubs were falling off pitches like that right down the middle. Now they're putting the ball in play on hitters' pitches. EY going the other way. Or later on in the ballgame, I like EY jumping on that first pitch as long as he, as he is selective in doing it. Runner goes. Pena from his knees. Did he get him? Yes, he did. What a throw. And for only the third time this year, Young caught trying to steal. And the only way you're going to, the only way you're going to get EY on this particular jump is Pena throwing from his knees. He throws a strike down to second base from his knees. Boy, Benito Santiago was successful doing that. He cuts down on your time to second base. Gutierrez drives that ball to right, and that's an easy play for Sean Green. So quickly, two men out for Bill Miller, who's walked twice, scored once. Four to nothing. Cubs have the lead over the Dodgers. Pena out maybe to try to work out a different pitching sequence against Miller because he's lost him twice now. Well, Bill Miller, similar to Grudz Atlantic in a case where once in a while they will pick spots to drive the ball. Grudz Atlantic working with the Dodgers. That's one of the things that he is working on, picking certain counts. Pulling the ball. Bill Miller has done that this year. So I'm taking a slider against the San Diego Padres. Drive it to right field. And that one 
Bryant driven to right. Grunts Atlantic. Terrific play to rob him of a hit. Nothing wrong with the G-man's D on that play. Miller robbed, and the Cubs are out in the fifth inning, but lead it by four. At this time, we'd like to ask everyone to switch off all electronic devices and put away all laptop computers. Hello. Hi, this is Jim's video calling. Two videos, Camp Cleavage and Undercover Babes, are overdue again. Please return those as soon as possible. Thank you. I think we got a fourth. Getting the guys together? Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. Camp Cleavage and Undercover Babes. Hey, you. Yeah, I miss you too. It's been a while. Hey, Mom. No, I'll be home soon. Verizon Wireless. Our network covers more towns, more cities, hey, and more places uh, than anybody else's in the country. So you know that just about anywhere your business takes you, you'll stay connected to your biggest fans. Verizon Wireless. Simple, affordable, national. Join in. The Keith Overman Evening News. This is our chance to go to the big show. Sports News' most unique voice. Is it possible? Sports News' most unique show. It sounds too good to be true. Sundays at 10.30 on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to Wrigley Field. And, well, one of the better arms here in this building, it's not on the field. It belongs to this man right here, the quarterback for the University of Illinois, Kurt Kidner. Kurt, what are you doing here? Throwing out the first pitch. I'm just glad I made it. I didn't skip it. I didn't throw it over his head. I'm just... Happy to do it. It's been a long time since I've thrown a baseball. Guy with a golden arm like yourself, do you throw a screwball, a slider? What do you have going for yourself? I throw the old number one. Just try and get it there. That's all I was working on. You're going to be a senior this year, obviously a Heisman candidate. How's the football team looking at U of I? Football team is doing great. We had a great spring ball. We all played well offensively and defensively, and I'm real happy with the guys we have returning, really stepping up the young guys and uh, getting to the next level. Kurt, wish you the best of luck this fall. Thank you very much. That's Kurt Kittner, a former Schaumburg Saxon. He's a local kid. Chip, Dave, back up to you guys. Kurt Eric, thank you very much. Seven straight retired by Julian Tavares as he enters the sixth inning of play. And he has had Gary Sheffield's number. He struck him out twice looking. Fastball that zipped over the outside corner. And Gary takes a ball low. Reds bat for the final time today, trailing San Diego 3-2. Over at Synergy Field. Arizona trails at New York 8-1. That game moves to the ninth inning as well. The other action is later on. 2-0 to Sheffield. Taking all the way, ball three. Tavera still keeping the ball down. However, against these Dodger hitters, they will make the adjustment. Every once in a while, you got to elevate that fastball. Japanese for a strike. Three and one. Julian has walked just one man today. Struck out six. That's been the story for him all year. Sheffield swinging for the downs. Fouled it away, three and two. He is not afraid to swing the bat. He's got a lot of movement in his swing, Chip, but like all hitters, he gets in that good hitting position right there. Now he waggles that bat. He's one of the few guys that can have that much movement in his swing and still get the head out. 3-2 pitch hammer deep toward left. Rondell White at the wall, leaps up, and it's in the basket. Or out of the basket. They say it didn't go in. It's a stand-up double for Sheffield. Thought for a moment it went in and ricocheted back out. So Sheffield with a rocket stands at second. I think the Cubs might have gotten a break here. Did it go in the basket and come back out? Yeah. 
Well, it looked like it's a home run. Looked like it was in to me. Boy, that two basket plays in San Diego. Ben Davis hit one, and the umpires reversed the call, called it a home run. Well, we had two looks at it, one live and then two replays, and still couldn't tell. So there was no argument from Sheffield nor from the Dodgers, so they settled for the double, and here's Green. See if we can tell one more look. If it's in the basket, it's a home run. Does it ricochet out is the question. I think that's a home run. I think it bounced off the wall and then came flying back out. Just missed the corner. Two balls and a strike. So the game still a shot out for Julian Tavares. Riven off the roof. Two and two. Really, Green's power is to right center. Every once in a while, he will take a shot to left center, but that's one of the things that clubs have done against him, really shifted. Ricky Gutierrez shading towards the middle for Sean Green. Green's got to get that man to third if he can't drive him in himself, but that sinker sinks out of sight. Tavares just using the Dodgers' aggressiveness against them. That's eight. Make it seven strikeouts for Tavares, I beg your pardon, and a big first down. Exactly. Tavares got Green a ground ball first time off of his fastball, getting getting him out front with the fastball. Let me throw that change up down and away, and right now that pitch, guys are not able to read it. That's the beauty of a change up. If you've got a good grip, you throw it just like your fastball because that's what sells the hitter is your arm speed. His arm speed is exactly like his fastball. Seven strikeouts by Tavares today matches his career high. He also did it against the Phillies this year. And here's Karros, 0 for 2, and a ground ball up the middle. Ricky can't get it. It's into center field. Sheffield around third will score without a play, and Eric Karros drives home the first Dodger run to make it a 4-1 game. So one in, one on, one out. Cubs by three now. Ricky really playing towards the hole. Carroll's a good pull hitter. It's a medium ground ball, 18 hopper through the hole, but with Ricky in the hole, no chance. Good news out of Cincinnati. The Padres lead the Reds 5-2. to two. Ricky Henderson, 3-4. for four. He scored three times today. Ryan Klesko's driven in three, and now Trevor Hoffman's on to work the bottom of the ninth inning. Cincinnati and Milwaukee two games behind the Cubs. Here's Hanson. He is singled and he's been called out on a check swing strike. Cubs would love a double play. If we get one, CarX donates 50 bucks to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. CarX Auto Service, more than you thought for less than you think. Carroll's the lead at first. His 18th RBI of the year. And it's one and two. The Bears primarily working these left-handed hitters away. Every once in a while showing that fastball in. Once he goes in, he goes back away. You get that ground ball. Bucket of ground balls today. That one fouled off Todd Hunley. Yep. Seven strikeouts for Tavares. And one, two, three, four, five, six ground outs. Especially 13 against, of the 16. Especially against these left-handed hitters. If you try and pull left-handed, you've got no chance. Left-handers try to go the other way. Little ground ball. Stairs has that. 360 spin one. Relay to first is in time. Three, six, one. Double play. 50 bucks to the Make-A-Wish Foundation from CarX. And the Dodgers' sixth inning is in the books.
boom, boom. CarX is the place in town with 50% off lifetime guaranteed brake shoes and pads. CarX. More than you thought. For less than you'd think. Don't worry, call the CarX man. Share my determination. Feel my power. See my game. In support of active women everywhere, ERA presents the See My Game sweepstakes. It's your chance to see the world's greatest women tennis players go head-to-head -head in San Diego, California at the WTA Acura Classic. Just stop by your participating Cup Foods and enter to win. And remember to watch the Acura Classic on Fox Sports Net, August 3rd and 4th. Mm-hmm. Everything looks in order. So, Doc, what's it going to be? Ugly. The Last Word with Jim Rome. The only sports commentary that's truly, brutally honest. Weeknights at 11.30 on Fox Sports Net. You're watching Fox Sports Net. Gave another ground ball out off the bat of the Dodgers, and it results in an inning-ending double play. One stairs does a good job here, following his glove, turning the proper way. Going to strike to Ricky Gutierrez. Gutierrez turns around, throws a bullet to Tavares. Tavares bouncing around off that mound. So $50 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation from CarX, and friends, we'd like to notify you that the new Ty Beanie Baby named Addison makes its debut at Wrigley Field Sunday, May 20th. Named after the famous street in front of Wrigley, Addison will be given to the first 10,000 kids, 13 and under, compliments of Pepsi. Catch all the action as the Cubs finish off the series against the Arizona Diamondbacks at 120. For tickets call 1-800-THE-CUBS. Here's Sosa. Got it going with a two-run homer. And he mashed in the fourth inning. It's now a 4-1 game in favor of the Cubs. As we play on in the sixth inning. With Sammy Sosa's home run, got a hanger from Dryford. He's not hung too many breaking balls, but right now Sosa, every time he gets a mistake, he's hitting it hard somewhere. Well, he's uh, become a very tough man to pitch to because the breaking pitch that he would swing at in years earlier, he's just looking away at it. He's made himself just a tremendous major league hitter. And his walk totals are up, so much more patient man. The results reflect it. He almost swung out of his hat that time. He's getting some good counts to swing the bat. Here's just a backup slider. Well, when you say backup, you mean the fan. Back up against that fence and see if he can catch it. As he hit it a mile. And then Todd Hunley followed with a two-run home run himself. Well, Chip, you mentioned... Sammy Sosa being much more selective at the plate and also now with two strikes he's able to foul off pitchers pitches. Dreyfus throws a nasty slider away and he fouls it off. 28 walks this season. But still the RBI totals very high. And Sosa a good rip and out of play. Plate discipline Plate discipline's a big part of it for Sosa. Other teams are starting to notice now that everybody around Sammy getting hot, so they won't have the luxury of working around him. Exactly. And once Miller, Sosa, White, Hundley, and Stairs all get hot at the same time, this is going to be a, a very tough lineup to pitch to. Dreyford goes up and away to get him. That's six strikeouts for the Dodger right-hander. One away in the sixth for Rondell White. Well, and every once in a while, Dryford will climb the ladder with hitters. And you're setting up outside. That's good old country hardball. Strike one to Rondell. And Jose Nunez, the Dodger bullpen. Nothing in two. Rondell's not seeing that breaking ball real well right now, is he? Boy, it's a difficult pitch to pick up, especially when it's down. And we've seen him hang a couple of breaking balls 
much easier to pick up, but when it starts off middle down, it will disappear. He took that one for strike three, so White is out number two in the sixth. And it's up to Todd Huntley if the Cubs are to add to the total in this frame. Dreyfuss got a great breaking ball. And he showed it off to White and added bat. Well, you get locked into that breaking ball away, and every once in a while he will flip up a mediocre breaking ball, but just froze Rondell. Unley's two-run homer, the first of the year for him at Wrigley Field. It was also his fourth. He's driven in 15. And I think even more importantly, Chip, Todd going the other way with the fastball away. Good plate coverage. That's where the ball will fly out no matter the wind direction. One ball, one strike. Good news from Cincinnati. The Padres beat the Reds again, 5-2 today. So Cincinnati moves a half game further back. Cubs lead them by two and a half now. Did Hundley go? No appeal to C.B. Buckner at the moment. Two balls and a strike. And Cincinnati really getting it done on the road. Ten and five, however, at home struggling. Five and nine. Now they sure miss Ken Griffey Jr. Deion Sanders gives him a whole lot of excitement, but... He hasn't been able to play, and Barry Larkin's got a groin problem again. He wasn't in the lineup for the Reds this afternoon. Really, when Griffey is 100% back in that lineup, Cincinnati's got about five outfielders. So they have a pleasant problem on the outfield once Griffey is healthy. Hundley gets a two-out walk, and that's four of those from Dreyfer. And so he's aboard for Matt Stairs, who has walked as well. He's been called out on strikes. Four-one, Cubs have the lead. We're in the sixth. The battle of first-place teams going the Cubs' way so far on the weekend. And a ball low to Matt. One ball, no strikes. Now Eric Caro's in with a word, wants to know if he should play at the bag or behind Todd Hundley over at first. You figure Todd with catcher speed wouldn't be running here, but Caro's wants to make sure. He wants to be able to get a good jump off of first base with the left-hander stairs who sent a few rockets down the right field line. Well, he's playing behind him, now he backs up. 1-0 pitch. Off the corner to even things up. I've had first basemen come up to me <laughs> and ask me, hey, uh, you know, if I'm not doing very well. First baseman came up to me one time and said, hey, would you mind if I play behind the tarp? Oh, that's nice. 1-1. One, one. Just what you need. You're struggling already, and they're getting on you while you're out there. <laughs> very humbling game. Because it's no fun over first base with a left-handed hitter. You're holding the runner on. There's some bullets hit that way. Mets waxed Arizona today, 8-1. to one. And Mike Piazza not in the lineup for New York today. 1-2 and two to Matt Stairs with Hundley at first. And a high drive twisting out of play. And just out of reach of the upper deck. Don't know if it's sellout, but it might be close today. Pretty darn close, Chip. One of the things with Matt Stairs, lifts his leg up, his head really moves forward. That's one of the things that Matt Stairs is trying to correct a little bit. Set that front foot up, then down, not moving your head. That one pops away. Pena had no chance. A nasty biting slider. And that's a wild pitch, sending Todd into scoring position where a hit could mean a very valuable insurance run. Dreyfer launching his third wild pitch of the year. Slider that gets away from him, Pena. Not able to move his feet in time to get in front of it. 
whole key with stairs when he does lift up his front leg sometimes he has a tendency to go forward and anytime your head is moving at a pitch going 90 miles an hour that turns into about a hundred mile an hour pitch two balls two strikes Cubs by three the pitch got him swinging and Dreyford strikes out the side with a walk sandwiched in between both men have pitched well but Tavares a whole lot better 4-1 as we head to inning number seven It's a shootout between AL Powerhouse and Frank Thomas is the Sox power source. A-Rod leads the Rangers high-priced offense. White Sox Rangers tomorrow at 1.30 on Fox Sports Net. Hi, I'm John Matthews with White Hen with a contest that's a real catch. Every Wednesday when the Cubs play on Fox Sports Net, one lucky fan wins a fresh deli lunch for eight from White Hand and great Fox Sports Net gear. At season's end, one grand prize winner will score lunch for a bunch delivered by Cubs catcher Joe Girardi. To enter, send a postcard to Fox Sports Net or log on to SportsHomeChicago.com. Then watch Cubs baseball on Fox Sports Net as we announce the winners. White Hand Wednesday, your chance to score some great food. Now batting... Sammy In-depth stats on where they hit them and everything else baseball straight from the source. Cubs.com. Connect with it. It's a time for getting out, going places, and having fun. We've got what you need to get there, the full line of Chevy cars. Now get 0.9% APR financing on a 2001 Chevy Venture with over $4,000 in average finance savings. That's 0.9 on Venture. See dealer for residency and other restrictions. So get out there and make your money count at your Chevy dealer today. But the Cubs pitching has been red hot. Tops in the National League, and Julian Tavares has spun another masterpiece, and the Cubs bats are really heating up, too. Sammy Sosa in the fourth inning. It is 396th career home run, and then Todd Huntley with Wondell White aboard unloaded for the first time the other way for the Cubs. As we look at our IBM game summary, Joe Carter is in a 35th place all-time tie with Sammy Sosa. Eric Karros has the lone L.A. RBI. Darren Dreifert and Julian Tavares each with seven strikeouts. But Dreifert, a four-hitter sequence. Walk, homer, single homer. The difference in today's game. So here we go to the seventh inning. Angel Pena leads it off. He's one for two. Pena with an infield hit back in the Los Angeles second. Tavares with a career-high tying seven strikeouts. Balls behind, two balls, no strikes. He backs away and on four straight is aboard. So Dodgers needing base runners get a good at bat from their catcher Pena and leadoff walk sends the Cub bullpen is scurrying down the left field line. You figure it's a 4-1 game wind starting to die down a little bit. The Dodgers still have the big thumpers coming up. They could a sacrifice here trying to get one here maybe one or two late. Let's see how Jim Tracy plays it now with Cora in the batter's box. showing bunt and he took a strike and certainly with Dreifert on deck Marquise Grissom will hit for Dreifert so you get a man in scoring position take your shot with Grissom toward first stairs funny hop handle it second base one first base to Julian Stretch you bet he did what a play two three six one double plays in as many innings Boy, for being new over at first base, Matt Stairs 
can certainly bounce around. Follows his glove here and throws a strike to Ricky Gutierrez. And I'm not so sure Julian Tavares didn't pull something here as he stretches on this play. Throwing it inside the bag to Ricky. And the stretch by Tavares, although I, some concern here with him possibly pulling a grind. It's still a very chilly day, even though he's been working hard out there. He says he's okay, and I'm sure Don Baylor wants the honest answer from him here. And so the double play erases Pena and Cora. It's another $50 donation to Cubs Care Charities by Carex. And Iram Boca Chica will pinch it for Dryford here. Well, and I'm sure Mac Newton is holding his breath too. Conditioning this Cubs team. And those are a type of injuries that have been avoided this year thanks to the stretching routine by Mac Newton. So Dryford all over the line score today. Six innings, four runs, seven hits. Four walks, eight strikeouts, a wild pitch, and two home runs. So two outs, base is empty for Boca Chica. And Tavares right down the middle for strike one. Originally, manager Jim Tracy of the Dodgers had Marquise Grissom on the on-deck circle, but with the double play, goes with Boca Chica. And Tavares has him set up for a career-high effort today. Two strikes. He struck out seven. That equals his career mark. And Iram Boca Chica digs in. Here comes the 0-2 from Julian. Just missed. Oh, you wonder how Colorado let this guy escape. He pitched very well for the Rockies at Coors Field. And if you can pitch there, you can pitch any place. Well, and his type of stuff does pretty good in Denver. Fastball slider, that's the only way you can get guys out there. Crossfire got him. Career high for Julian Tavares. He strikes out Boca Chica to retire the side. And Miller Light proudly presents Dennis Savard for our seventh inning stretch. Hello, Chicago. This feels like hockey weather today, so are you ready? And a one, and a two, and a three. Bring me out to the ball game. Bring me out to the park. Bring me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I ever get back so Ruth. Root, root for the Cubbies. If they don't win, it's a shame. I hit one, two, three strikes around at the old ball game. Yeah, go Cubs! Thank you. Fox Sports and Miller would like to salute McGee's a fine Chicagoland establishment back with the bottom of the seventh. Famous for taking you places other four-wheelers can't. And right now, Toyota is rolling back prices on every new forerunner. As much as $1,500 on selected models. Plus, with some newly standard features, the forerunner SR5 has never been a better value. So see your Toyota dealer now and get your next adventure rolling. Whatever concerns you, inspires you, enchants you, or thrills you, there's a channel for you on AT&T Cable Services. AT&T Cable Services, where there's something for everyone. 
Terry Adams is on the hill, the former Cub, pitching for the Dodgers as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. 4-1 Cubs lead, hot shot. Buford's got another hit. He's two out of three. His bat's coming to life, folks, and so is the Cub offense. Everything looking good. And why not after that great rendition of Take Me Out to the Ball Game by Dennis Savard? Everybody's thinking about good things happening. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Chip. I, uh, it's, it's a delight to be here. You know, I mean, uh, it's an honor. And, uh, you know, I've had fun, hopefully, that the Cubs will keep going on today, Dave, and uh, win this uh, this ball game. Well, I mean, obviously, uh, obviously, the big news in town is uh, Brian Sutter, head coach now with the Blackhawks. What's that going to mean for the organization? Well, I, I think they made a great choice, you know. And I watched your game yesterday, and I know Brian was here yesterday. And... Uh, it's a great choice. You know, we need a guy that, uh, you know, as a player, Brian was a character player. He was a leader. And uh, one of the things that uh, we missed this year is uh, leadership and character in the last few years. And uh, hopefully that uh, Brian and I and uh, Al McCannum or the other system with me that will bring back this team or, or this city, uh, you know, to, to a playoff contender again. It's a tough situation that you had to endure moving from behind the bench as an assistant to the full-time head coach late in the year in a frustrating year. What did you learn most about yourself when you became the Blackhawks uh, head coach? As that ball deflected off Adams' glove, and Cooper beats it out at first. Now Buford heading toward third, and Carroll wisely holds on. Nobody was covering home. Everything bouncing the Cubs way in this series. You know, it's, it was a diff it was a difficult time to take over with seven games to go with our team, you know, really out of the playoffs. But uh, you know, one thing I got to say is our players played very well for us. They played hard, and uh, we we did not win a game. Uh, we lost five and tied two. And uh, but at the time, uh, hopefully that's going to help us next year. We met some we met some teams that New Jersey, Ottawa, uh, Toronto that. Uh, that were at the time uh, fighting for either first place in the division or, or being a playoff contender. So, you know, our players responded very well. They played hard. And, you know, it's very difficult to play when you're out of it. Sure. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I respect them and they, they played hard. And uh, I know with Brian there next year, we're going to do well. I mean, they're, from day one, Brian's going to bring respect and he's going to bring work ethic. And, uh, you know, as, as Brian said yesterday in his press conference, uh, you know, we need to improve a lot in areas, and and I I, I, th I know for a fact that he will do that. And, uh, you know, our team defense wasn't very good last year, and if we do do well on that, uh, we have got a lot of abilities up front, you know, to score some goals, and we do that, we'll do well. Dennis, June 15, 2000, big day for you, inducted into the Hall of Fame. What was that? Yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was awesome. You know, I... Uh, EY ground ball through, base hit. That'll score Buford. Cooper stops at second. Cubs had a run. 5-1 here in the seventh inning. A three-hit day for the former Dodger, Eric Young. Boy, you, you know, you're growing, growing up as a young man, you know, you, you, you play sports, and you guys have played sports all your life, too, and, and it's... Uh, it, it, you know, you start as a young boy and you, you, you play hockey as I did or you play baseball, whatever sports you're, you're competing in. Uh, you know, all I want to do is do well what I do in sports. And I played baseball, I played hockey, I played soccer, I played football. You can name them all. I played, I played a lot of sports, but, uh, you know, obviously hockey was my favorite one. And I grew up in a family where hockey was uh, one of the number one priorities as far as sports is, con is concerned. And... Uh, you know, I just went on and played as a young boy and, uh, you know, made it to, junior, to the junior ranks. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Montreal, Canada. Okay. And, uh, you know, went on and played as a 16-year-old and junior, 17 and 18-year-old. And, uh, you know, draft came along and then got drafted. And, uh, you know, 22 years later or whatever, but uh, I played for 17 years in National Hockey League. So, very fortunate. Great family that I grew up with and great friends and... Uh, you know, it's... Gutierrez lays down the butt. Adams is going to go to third, and he threw it away. Boy, the Cubs are playing gas house-style baseball. They're running all over the place. 
that with the wind blowing in early on, you've got to execute, and the Dodgers do not execute here. If you're not under control as a pitcher, tough play to make thrown to third base. Does not pick up the third baseman as Hanson has to scramble back to third. It's all about small ball. So the bases are loaded now for Bill Miller. Dodgers have to bring the infield in, trailing 5-1, and Miller chops it over Carroll's head. Base hit, scores Coomer. Younger out third. He's going to score. 7-1 Cubs, and all this happening to former Cub Terry Adams. Wow. You know what? I could be here for half an hour. That's okay, as long as the Cubs hey, win today. Hey, you're doing your job, man. This is awesome. <laughs> First and third, still nobody out. Boy, and when you don't execute as Terry Adams did not on the play before this, bad things happen, and Bill Miller pounds one off the dirt over the drawn-in infield. Well, I got to ask you, Dennis, as Sammy Sosa stands in, you mentioned you grew up in Montreal. What does it mean to have Mario Lemieux back and playing in the National Hockey League as a player owner? Well, that's a great, great question, Chip. You know, it's it's great for a game, and uh, you know, I, I think I think they lost today, and uh, you know, Buffalo, what a resi resilient team, and what a good character team as far as being down two nothing, losing their first two home games at home. I mean, you guys know about home field advantage, and the same thing with hockey. And this year, for some reason, that doesn't happen. But uh, you know, when you lose two first games at home in the series, in the four out of seven series, and you go back and come back and win two games in Pittsburgh and come back today in Buffalo and win the game. It's incredible. But momentum is, that's what sports is all about. And uh, so, so that's a base hit up the middle. Man, this is unbelievable. Ricky scores. And right now, Terry Adams is getting shellacked as he faces the Cubs here in the seventh inning. Five hits, four runs have scored. And the parade is not over yet. I apologize for having to keep on interrupting you with all this. Hey, I love it. Who's going who's to take over the spin around? Anybody in the National Hockey League? That's what everybody wants to know. Well, there's a lot of guys, you know, in, in this game are, are, are better than I, than I was. And uh, there'll be other players that will be better than the guys are in now today. Uh, you know, the different eras. You know, the Stan Mikitas and Bobby Alls had their time. And the Gretzkys and, and uh, you know, Lemuse and... Obviously, Mario is still playing today, and it's great to see him back. But, uh, you know, there'll be some other kids that come along and do as well or better than all of us. And, uh, you know, our game's great, just like baseball. Rondell White splits the right center field gap, and that might clear them all. Here comes Miller. Look at Sammy fly around the bags. The ball in the ivy. Rondell White with a ground rule double. Hey, hey, Dennis, what are you doing the rest of the year? You want to hang out here? I mean, you're getting all kinds of points. Well, I love it. You know, I'm, I'm a big baseball fan, and uh, <laughs> I don't have a problem with it as long as our Cubbies wins today. And, you know, we're all from Chicago, so we want our sports teams to do well. And uh, it's great to see them do well in this inning. But, uh, you know, you guys... I'm probably saving you guys some energy for the rest hey. of the year. It's a long year, 162 games, you know? I'll tell you what. If we like what we've seen so far. And Dennis, all the best to you and the Blackhawks. Congratulations. Yeah, no problem. Best wishes. We'll see you guys in the Stanley Thanks Cup final soon, me. I'm sure. All right. Pleasure. Dennis Thank Savard, a hockey legend. And he's helped the Cubs blow this one wide open. 10-1 to 1 is our score. Back at a raucous Wrigley right after this. Polyunsaturated. P O ginger vitis G pungent P U N G halitosis A hyperventilate E I H Y U T I N N T D sweet dreams S W E There's a better way to get to Washington D.C. Fly to Baltimore Washington International on Southwest. You are now free to move about the country. Nothing beats the fun and excitement of watching the Cubs in beautiful Wrigley Field. And you can be there. That's right, tickets are still available for upcoming Cubs games. To get your tickets, just call tickets.com at 1-800-THE-CUBS. Head to the Wrigley Field box office. Punch in www.cubs.com. Or visit any Chicagoland Sears or Sears hardware store. 
Don't wait. Catch all the Cubs action firsthand and get to the game. Hey, you. Yeah, I miss you, too. It's been a while. Hey, Mom. No, I'll be home soon. Verizon Wireless. Our network covers more towns, more cities, hey, and more places than anybody else's in the country. So you know that just about anywhere your business takes you, you'll stay connected to your biggest fans. Verizon Wireless. Simple, affordable, national. Join in. Well, happy Cinco de Mayo indeed. The Cubs put a Cinco on Terry Adams, the former Cub, in this seventh inning. There's still nobody out. And on the ground rule double, Sammy Sosa sent back to third base. And now Jose Nunez is going to greet Todd Hundley in the seventh inning. A 10-1 Cub blowout. And our old pal Pat Foley is here. This is like old hockey times, right? Oh, well, you bring Savard around and the offense shows up. That's not a surprise. Well, I know you all have to be excited about uh, Brian Sutton. A terrific fit, and uh, this is exactly, I think, what this franchise needs is a guy to come in here and kick butt and take names. Well, he's going to turn things around pretty quickly, you figure. And here's Huntley, a two-run homer today. Boy, what a ball game. Stem to stern for the Cubs. It's been almost a perfect afternoon, leading 10-1 over the first place Los Angeles Dodgers. I don't know if you heard from from Dennis a moment ago, but Buffalo beat Pittsburgh today in oh, overtime. They? Oh, they were down 2-0. So, I saw Pittsburgh was leading. So who do you like in that series, and who do you like in the whole ball of wax, the Stanley Cup playoffs? Well, I, you know, it's pretty tough to go against Colorado if they stay healthy. Two strikes to Hundley. He lays off that. One ball, two strikes with the Dodger infield in. They've had a big injury already with Joe Sackett, one of the top right. players in the league, uh, being hurt. But... Uh, they got an awful lot of skill there and they've got a lot of playoff tested people and be pretty tough to pick against them right now. I think everybody or a lot of most people in the league feel that it would be in New Jersey against Colorado in the finals. One ball two strikes to Hundley. Comes with five in the inning. He lashes at that pops it out of play. The one real black guy I guess on the sport if you could pardon the pun was what took place with Ty Domi. Your reaction to his suspension, and was that a warranted penalty? Oh, tremendously warranted, and I uh, I applaud Colin Campbell. Uh, he should not be eligible to play anymore in the playoffs. And I mean, for for that to happen with seven seconds left in a game where the issue is decided, that uh, the eye couldn't be any blacker than uh, than than what he did. So uh, give him a good spanking. Good for good for the league. Huntley strikes out. Runners second, third now, and Julio Zuleta will bat for Matt Stairs. I was out of town for a couple weeks, Chip, and uh, Dave, since the hockey season ended, I come back and look at the standings. How cool is it to see these boys oh, in first place? It's you guys awesome. must be having a ball. Well, you know, <laughs> it's funny. You look at what Texas did in the offseason, patted their team around offense with Ken Caminiti and Andres Galarraga and, of course, Alex Rodriguez. But they have had problems getting people out. The Cubs retooled this ball club around pitching and defense with Bill Miller, Jason Barre, Julian Tavares, Flash Gordon, and Jeff Facero in the bullpen. And, well, the results speak for themselves. So and You mentioned the standings. You look at Dave Turner. He's got everything going. He's got the stats. Oh, they don't miss anything in that truck, do they? <laughs> They're pretty quick. We got to admit. One ball, no strikes. Two Zuleta with the infield in. Swap! Belt it! And it's there! Pulling his hands in, working on that new stance with Don Baylor and Jeff Pentland. And results are immediate. I think they've had enough. <laughs> A three run over by Zuleta. There's only one man out. The Cubs with an eight run seventh inning. We got to get the hockey guys out here more often. I'll tell you what. I, <laughs> unbelievable. Pat, I, always, I enjoyed listening to you last year. I think it was last year you did a play by play game. For the, Cubs, for the Cubs. I just remember your call when somebody slid at 
safely into third base. You're saved. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a, it was a real treat. I've always been a Cubs fan, and uh, I remember coming out here when I was a 12-year-old little leaguer and uh, being able to sit in the booth with the great Jack Quinlan and Vince uh, Lloyd and Lou Boudreau, and uh, that's kind of where my bug for broadcasting started. There's so. only one problem with this game. There's no icing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How about those shots, the one Zuleta and the Sammy hit out of here, a hurricane wouldn't have kept those things in the ballpark. Well, everybody's going to see the score of this game around the country and say, well, the yeah. wind must have been blowing out at Wrigley. Not the case. I mean, just cannon shots against Adams, Nunez, and Dreifert today, and the Cubs routing Los Angeles 12 to 1. Man, oh, man. Boy, and this inning really could have resulted differently second hitter up in this inning Ron Coomer pinch hitting for Tavares it's a ground ball right back to Adams goes off his glove that was a stone double play but the Dodgers have not been able to do some little things in this series and it's really hurt them exactly. Buford strikes out for out number two you know, I think that's a that's a great point Chip because when you don't do the little things it almost seems like the baseball gods are against you and then no that turns into big innings and we've seen that in this inning, Terry Adams double play ball and also throwing the ball to third base on the sacrifice. Nunez's best pitch was just on display. He got Buford with it. And here's Coomer for the second time in the inning. So, Pat, what's the schedule for you and the schedule for the Blackhawks now as you? Well, they're going to be very involved with uh, trying to keep in touch with the players, make sure that the offseason conditioning program is adhered to. You guys might want to consider <laughs> bringing in Mac Newton. Bring it in. Mac Newton. Oh, yeah, I guess he was really something for He's you been outstanding so far. But, uh, you know, hockey's a lot different now than it was uh, 20 or 25 years ago. I mean, as all sports are, it's it's 12-month-a-year job now for these guys, it, at least for the guys who are going to succeed. And, uh, you know, hopefully the Black Hockey, that's one thing Brian Sutter stressed. He said, we're going to have one of the best conditioned teams in the league, and that'll be different than uh, the way it was 12 months ago. Coomer down on strikes. Pat, it's great to see you and Dennis. Great to see All you guys. Uh, keep that summer. wet flag flying, will you? We'll see you here tomorrow. Can you be here? We <laughs> love what you guys have done for us keep today. Great work, you guys. 12-1 Cubs after seven. Southwest Airlines celebrates 30 years of freedom. 30 years, one mission, low fare. Want to get away? Now you can. Fly Southwest Airlines for just $39 to $99 when you purchase by May 24th. You are now free to move about the country. Honey, did you get paper plates? You got ice, right? Short trips really beat up your engine, but Pennzoil with Pure Base is formulated to protect against the harshness of everyday driving. We can't change the way you have to drive, but we can protect you from it. What kind of steaks did you get? That's gotta hurt. Stop and go. Protection from Pennzoil. Get ready for summer with a Pennzoil synthetic or synthetic blend oil change at Jiffy Lube and get $5 back. For the first time ever, own the Man of Steel on DVD with invincible special features. Superman the Movie. Own it on video cassette and DVD. Carl Malone broke down racial barriers in Utah, only to be rewarded with contempt beyond the glory. Tomorrow at 8 on Fox Sports Net. Here's your chance to win tickets to Cubs and White Sox games on back-to-back -back games. Presenting the Fox Sports Net Ultimate Double Header. Two grand prize winners will also win a luxury suite for a game at Wrigley Field and Comiskey Park. To enter, log on to SportsHomeChicago.com now. Well, all you know what is broken loose at Wrigley Field as we look at our Pennzoil protection play. Julian Tavares induces a Dodger hitter for the second time in his many innings to wrap into a 3-6-1 double play. This time it's Alex Cora. And just in case Julian tweaked something on the stretch, he's out of the game after seven with a career-high eight strikeouts. And the Cubs in the bottom half blow it open with an eight-run frame against Terry Adams and young Mr. Nunez. Gary Matthews Jr. into the game to play left. Ron Coomer stays in at first, and the Cubs...
clobbering Los Angeles 12-1 as Courtney Duncan starts off the inning. Duncan making his 12th appearance of the year for the Cubs. And with the injury to Mike Fury, remains in the big leagues. And Tom Goodwin, the man he faces first here in the eighth inning. The Cubs with an eight run, seven hit, seventh inning. There's also a Dodger error. And nobody left on base. So it looks like the Cubs are in pretty good shape to win their seventh series of the year. It could go to 18 and 11. And Goodwin takes another strike. Two balls, two strikes. You know, Courtney Duncan was, as Dave mentioned, the man designated to go down to AAA when Flash Gordon joined the ball club. Mike Fury got hurt that night. And really, Courtney didn't deserve to go as he induces a ground ball out post play. Goodwin hustling. Round number one, but well, that's really a good problem for the Cubs to have. You have too many arms and too few roster spots. And for a team that, again, is stressing its pitching first, its defense second, and knowing that the offense will be there, what a luxury it is to have Courtney Duncan as your 10th, 11th, 12th man in your bullpen. And really early on, Don Baylor has put Courtney Duncan into some difficult situations, and he's responded well. Sometimes with the rookie, come in your ears are pinned back and you're nervous but it has not phased him at all and thanks in part to going to winter ball this year piling up saves playing for Sandy Alomar working on that changeup. that's a big pitch especially to left-handed hitters and then his break the ball to righties like that his fastball has good downward movement too so he's another ground ball guy when he's right and the count evens one and one to Dodgers second baseman Mark Red Zelanik. The Cubs playing before the biggest home crowd so far this year. On Sammy Sosa bobblehead doll day, 38,468, the paid attendance. And there are still some good seats available for the homestand finale tomorrow. It's a 120 first pitch. It's Cubs gray t-shirt day. You won't want to miss it. High fly ball, lazy to the middle infield. Eric Young. The G-Man is out number two. Eric Collins with an update. Thanks a lot, guys. Well, you mentioned it. Sammy Sosa bobblehead doll day, so I figured I'd get some critique on whether or not it looked like Sammy. I'm here with uh, Ryan, Dominic, and Joey from Schaumburg. And, uh, Dominic, what do you think? Give me the critique. Um, it looks like Sammy Sosa, except his bat's black that he uses in the game, not white, but it looks like him. Pretty good uh, eye for detail. What do you think? He looks a bit fat, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> let, the, let the folks at home see what they look like. Hold it up hot. Looks a little fat, doesn't he? Sammy's uh, starting to put on a little paunch there. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like there's a lot of happy hampers here. 10,000 of these bad boys given away, and now the Sox, or the Cubs, getting some runs to back them up. Back up to you guys. Okay, Eric, thanks a lot for the record, Sammy. That was Eric saying you're a little chubby, not us. <laughs> Nothing can do to Gary Sheffield. A double and the lone Dodger run. Los Angeles has scored one run in the series. Matchup of the number one versus number two pitching stabs has held true to form again today. Duncan. Oh, what a wicked cut by Sheffield. Nothing in two your count. Tomorrow it's Jason Bure against Eric Gagne. Bure looking for his fourth victory of the young season. It'll be good for Jason Bray to bounce back after his last outing, as Kevin Tappany did in yesterday's ball game, coming off an outing in Colorado. Well, that's what's impressed me about this Cubs pitching staff so far in this year is the resiliency of it. And you're not going to go out there every night and deal, but you have a bad outing, you come back, you have a good one. Well, again, the magic number for the Cubs this year has been four. And this team has scored four runs or more. They've done that 18 times this year. They've won 15 of those 18 games. Today, they scored four runs times three. 12 to one. Sheffield broke his bat. And a roller to short. Ricky's got it. Easy play. Inning over. Duncan, one, two, three, and out in the top of the eighth. 
We go to the bottom half with Eric Young set to. Introducing the smooth riding Toyota Highlander. Bringing an unexpected bit of comfort to the rugged world of the SUV. Hello, I'm Dan Moriarty from Cool Shots, and this is NHL Breakout. Slap shot, score! Get here and test your slap shot. Get tips from the pros from left to right, left to right, and join in the fun. Take part in the best off-ice hockey festival anywhere for all ages. You have to get here when NHL Breakout rolls into town. Hosted by the Chicago Blackhawks, June 9th and 10th at Soldier Field. For more information, call 312-455-7017 or log on to NHL.com. Here's your chance to be the official Toyota fan of the game. During the fifth inning of every Cubs game on Fox Sports Net, we'll randomly select one lucky fan of the game. If Chip or Dave read your name and the Cubs score in their half of the inning, you'll win a Toyota Fox Sports Net prize package that includes a hat, t-shirt, and a pair of Cubs tickets. To enter, send in a postcard to Toyota Fan of the Game, P.O. Box 543506, Chicago, 60654. Fox Sports Nets coverage of Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines celebrates 30 years of freedom. 30 years, one mission, low fare. Pennzoil, protection under the toughest driving conditions. Miller Lite, grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. And by AT&T Cable Services. Beautiful Navy Pier in downtown Chicago. Hey, I think I see my apartment over there. 12-1 is your score. As Jeff Revelay takes over left field for Gary Sheffield with the top of the Cub order due. And Augie Ojeda is going to lead things off. Don Baylor will get some of the regulars out of there, give them an inning off, and get some of those bench guys sharp. Augie Ojeda, the former U.S. Olympian, looks at a ball low. One ball, no strikes. Ground to be gained in the National League Central. Cincinnati already has been defeated. Milwaukee is at Florida later on tonight. Remember, they had to put Jeff Jenkins on the disabled list. That's a big hole in that lineup. That almost got Ojeda. Two balls and a strike. Big Cup fan Steve Castaneda watching on the satellite out in Los Angeles. Steve, one of the fine lighting professionals at the Fox Network Studios. We're on Pico Boulevard in downtown Los Angeles. Bring in foul tip by Ojeda. Two balls, two strikes. How do you know Steve is good? He can make Steve Lyons look good in the studio. That's how you know. Uh, a great time looking to Steve out there. Wish him the best. And the Cubs having the time of their lives today. 12-1 over the Dodgers. And down goes Ojeda. He has a pretty good breaking ball. He struck out four of the first five men he's faced. Oh, and really look at the San Diego Padre team only one left hander in the bullpen and here LA with only one lefty relying on Nunez to come in in certain situations to get the big left hander out the big question is he's a rule five from the New York Mets organization well he's young he's left handed he throws hard and talking to Jim Tracy before the series he said we're just trying to find spots where we think he can be successful meaning Dodgers are either blowing things out or they're getting blown out. We can just come in and pitch and get some confidence and learn about pitching at the major league level. If he stays the whole year on the roster, then the Dodgers would be able to send him back down right. next year if he didn't right. make the team. And there's a line drive down the left field line. That's fair. Ricky has his first base hit of the day. 
Emily up quickly. And Ricky into second. With one man out. And Chip, you mentioned his breaking ball. When his breaking ball, Nunez's his breaking ball is down. He's got some light. However, when he gets the ball up, we saw it with Zuleta last inning. Lazy breaking ball, thigh high. It hit pretty hard. Miller turns around and hits from the right side now. He's walked twice, singled once, scored twice, and driven in two. Bill now with a seven-game hitting streak, looking for his 12th multi-hit game of the year. And boy, has he done a job since moving into that number three spot in the batting world. Cubs had him hitting second for the first month of the year. And his numbers were very good as well. But it appears that it, Ricky Gutierrez and Eric Young working so well together exactly. last year won two. Cub offense, not coincidentally, feeling more comfortable as a whole now. And as long as Bill Miller is swinging the bat good, you want to have him in that RBI slot. Ricky Gutierrez in that six hole early on in the year. The way he was swinging the bat, that was a good RBI slot for him. However, now with Bill Miller in that three hole, Ricky Gutierrez is the obvious choice to put him in that two hole because as you mentioned, they work well together. And four straight, Miller walks for the third time today. First by Nunez, first and second with only one out. And the young left-hander has to face Sammy Sosa here. We asked Sammy earlier today how he would pitch to himself if he were on the mound. Here's his answer. <laughs> what Scotty and report on me is um, if I would have been pitching, right? If I would have been pitching to Sammy Sosa, right? Well, put a match out, just, I just walk him. <laughs> 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 because, um, you know, it's the type of player that, you know, doesn't matter if he off for one, off for two, off for three, you know, the last at bat, and we have a minus core position, you know, he's. He's ready to uh, do the job, so pretty much. He probably can give it a one or two at bat, but after that, you know, it's not going to be easy. I'll probably walk him. <laughs> not a bad idea for a guy that's driven in three runs today and 26 on the year. Uh, you know how I'd pitch him? With tears in my eyes. Roll it up there. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Oh, that hung up there, and he ripped it foul. <laughs> Got away with one there. I break the ball. The one-two. Just outside, evens it up. And two balls, two strikes. The Cubs blow it open with an eight-run, seven-hit, seventh inning. Terry Adams did not get a single man out. And gave up six hits. 2-2. Two -two. Stays alive. I think it's interesting here. When Usually when you have a man on second base, you go through a series of signs to disguise what you're throwing. This one goes right off Pena's shoulder. But in a 12 to 1 game, Pena's just putting one sign down. Really, if Sammy wants to know what's coming, Ricky Gutierrez could signal to him the pitch. 2 2. Little roller. Look at the young left hander scamper off the mound, slams and falls, and throws it into the Dodger bullpen. Gutierrez scores. Miller around third, stop there. Probably an infield hit, throwing air, and no RBI. It's 13 to 1. And Nunez like a cat off the mound. However, once you lose your footing, you've got to eat it. Do not throw the ball because chances are you're going to launch one, as Nunez does, down the right field line. Sean Green, good job out in right field backing up the play. So that's the second Dodger error of the day. And, uh, Jim 
Tracy just let Nunez take team here today. The score out of reach, 13 to one in the eighth. He'll let him go the rest of the way as Gary Matthews Jr. bats with two on and one out. We've said a couple of times over the course of these last several weeks that while the Cub offense time to time has had its struggles, when they break out, they may break out all at once. That's happened today. Club continues to pitch like it has. Whatever they do offensively might be academic. Again, you get four. If the team gives up three and a half, you're going to win. Well, I think it was key to get four off of Dwight. Early on against him, it was nasty early on, but then what the Cubs are doing such a good job of against some of the best pitchers in the National League, like Dreyford, is there get you don't get too many mistakes to hit. When you get those mistakes, boy, you got to put them in play and put them in play hard somewhere. Sosa, two-run bomb. Huntley, two-run bomb. Another walk. This young man doesn't do too well against left-handed, I think part right-handed hitters. And Jim Colbert of the Cubs going to pop out and try to settle him down. Base is loaded one away, and Todd Huntley hits. Huntley struck out when he faced Nunez in the hit parade in the seventh inning. Chip, that is a lonely feeling because, as you mentioned, Nunez needs to finish this inning. Jim Tracy does not want to go to his bullpen again. With the score 13-1, to he's got to finish this inning. And you know Jason Bray might be sitting on that cup bench saying, hey, guys, this is fun, but can you save me a couple tomorrow? He'll face Eric Kanye. In the series finale. Cubs have them loaded. They put 13 on the board. They've got only one out in the eighth. And Todd Hundley is the hitter. Todd with a two-run home run to cap the fourth for the Cubs. Again, 38,468 the paid attendance today. Biggest crowd of the year. One more with the Dodgers tomorrow. It'll be a WGN telecast. Then we go to Milwaukee for four games. We'll take our first look at Miller Park. Then to St. Louis next weekend. Miller, Sosa, Matthews aboard in the eighth. Julian Tavares started for the Cubs. One run. Clear high eight strikeouts today. His seven innings of work. He'll go to three and one on the campaign. Boy, and getting it done with that good sinker. There was about only a handful of pitches above the thigh. Two balls, two strikes. Well, Hunley did a good job the other day against the San Diego Padres. Austin. Left-handed reliever really kept everything closed. We saw that early on with Todd going the other way with the home run. His whole key is to keep that front shoulder closed. Try and drive the lefty the other way. Breaking ball, got it. And the young man, despite his control problems, still has five strikeouts in two innings. That's why they'll do everything they can to keep him at the major league level this year. You know, and sometimes. Getting rule five, as Nunez did, as you mentioned, Chip, you have to stay in the big leagues all year. Courtney Duncan's first major league at bat from the left side. But sometimes, Chip, it can hurt you as a player because if you're not ready for the big leagues, you don't get in there that often, you almost lose a year. Oh, no. Two balls, no strikes. How about this? First major league at bat. Kids in the game with the bases loaded. Two oh. Three and oh. How about this? He's in line to get an RBI.
sometimes I imagine you think, hey, he's a pitcher, he'll be an easy out, right? Yeah. Not so easy, is it? A 3 0 pitch. He walked it. So Courtney Duncan in on the RBI fun today. Bill Miller trots home and scores. And now Damon Buford bats. Buford today, a fine afternoon. Two hits, four tries. Boy, what a difference in swings now. Damon making the adjustment. Holding his bat a little more upright. Keeping his hands up and really swinging the bat with authority. early on in the year with Damon not playing every day not getting into a rhythm almost a defensive swing but now he's attacking the baseball one ball one strike Gale action Yankees beat Baltimore today five to two Tampa Bay leads Cleveland one nothing after two Seattle and Toronto tied at one heading to the third Austin over Oakland two nothing in the third Way outside, two balls and a strike. Don't forget tomorrow, a WGN telecast series and homestand wrap up. Jason Burry against Eric Gagne. As it appears, the Cubs will go for the series sweep. Dodgers are only in town one time this year. Look out. Hey, pretty good pickup by C.B. Buckner over there on the ricochet. Let's check out his arm. Oh, he's going to put that one in his pocket. And there are your problems. Jason Beret's ERA ballooned after his outing in Colorado. First run scored by him. So breaking ball that does not break. Hansen gets caught on the short hop. Boy, great jump by Damon Buford from second base. Scoring easily. 18 to 1. That's driven to right. And under the glove of Grantelani. They'll go ahead and send around Rob Coomer. He's going to score without a throw. And how much more punishment is Nunez going to have to take? Great job by Ricky going the other way on a breaking ball. Staying inside, driving it the other way. Well, Ron just taking it nice and easy around third. He had knee surgery. I don't know if he's 100%. No, he's or if he was just trying to induce the to get this over with. That one driven by Bill Miller. Deep down the left field line. That ball twisting, twisting, twisting and into the seats. A long, loud strike by Miller. It's nothing in one. Amazingly, the last time they allowed 20 runs was against the Cubs. I'm sure Ron Santa was in the middle of that, along with Billy Williams. Rubbing today, 1-1, one, one. he's in the dirt. Two balls and a strike. Two very, very long offensive innings for the Cubs. Eight runs, seven hits in the seventh. Seven more runs in the eighth. And no, the wind not blowing out today. Another bad one. And Nunez or somebody else is going to have to pay Sammy Sosa again. Well, Chip, this is what I'm talking about, a Rule 5 guy that you know, has had a couple rough bottoms that can really crush your confidence and put in this situation where he has to stay out there. And Hansen gets caught on the short hop. Boy, great jump by Damon Buford 
from second base. Scoring easily. 18 to 1. That's driven to right. And under the glove of Grazzolani. They'll go ahead and send around Rob Coomer. He's going to score without a throw. is Nunez going to have to take. Boy, great job by Ricky going the other way on a breaking ball. Staying inside, driving it the other way. Well, Ron just taking it nice and easy around third. Remember he had knee surgery. I don't know if he's 100% no, or if he was just trying to induce the to get this over with. That one driven by Bill Miller. Deep down the left field line. That ball twisting, twisting, twisting into the seats. A long, loud strike by Miller. It's nothing in one. Amazingly, the last time they allowed 20 runs was against the Cubs. Sure, Ron Santa was in the middle of that, along with Billy Williams. So an epic drubbing today. One one is in the dirt. Two balls and a strike. Two very, very long offensive innings for the Cubs. Eight runs, seven hits in the seventh. Seven more runs in the eighth. And no, the wind not blowing out today. Another bad one. And Nunez or somebody else is going to have to face Sammy Sosa again. Well, Chip, this is what I'm talking about, a Rule 5 guy that, you know, has had a couple rough outings. That could really crush your confidence to put in this situation where he has to stay out there. Good pitch that time. Three and two. I'm sure he's smart enough to realize this is what is keeping him in the major leagues with the Los Angeles Dodgers. You're a mop-up guy. Maybe by the end of the year, he may be in some more meaningful games for L.A. 3-2. Ball four. Fourth walk in the inning. Loads him up. And here's Sosa. Call off the jam. strikes and now finally somebody heads down to the Los Angeles bullpen to try to stop the agony and it's Chris Donalds they don't want to use a, a, a pitcher here if anybody has to come in they might use reserve Chris Donalds and we've already seen it this year Bobby Bonilla thrown an inning for the St. Louis Cardinals Two up. Off his foot. Two balls and a strike. My only question is why wasn't he up a little bit earlier? With this one well out of reach. But in and Tracy's defense, most of this has happened with two outs. 
Upstairs, ball three. Donald's getting loose in a hurry. <laughs> right to the line. Three, one. Swan belts it. Did he get it? Foul. I lost it. So did Sosa, but he pulled it to the wrong side of the pole, and he knew it. 3-2. Another RBI, another walk. And he's got to get this kid out of here for his own self-preservation. 20-1. to one. Last game, as we showed you, that the Dodgers allowed 20, also against the Cubs, also in May. It was 1967, May 20th. So Sosa drives in his fourth run. And the Cubs blasting Los Angeles, who will bring in Donalds to try to finish this thing in the eighth. At this time, we'd like to ask everyone to switch off all electronic devices and put away all laptop computers. Hello. Hi. Hi. You know, I don't want what happened to Sue to happen to me. You mean when she got hurt? I mean after. No supplemental insurance. No what? Applied. It covers the stuff regular insurance doesn't, like laws pay and other expenses. What does? Affleck! Oh! And what can I get you, sir? Affleck! Affleck. Without it, no insurance is complete. Affleck! Oh. Share my determination. Feel my power. See my game. In support of active women everywhere, ERA presents the See My Game Sweepstakes. It's your chance to see the world's greatest women tennis players go head-to-head -head in San Diego, California at the WTA Acura Classic. Just stop by your participating cup foods and enter to win. And remember to watch the Acura Classic on Fox Sports Net, August 3rd and 4th. Well, here's Chris Donalds. On to pitch. There are two outs in the Cubs half of the eighth inning. Another eight run frame. 20 to one. And the bases are still loaded. Looking through the Dodger media guide. Donalds has never pitched apparently in the major leagues. Well Chip he's uh, 74 to 76 miles an hour. Uh, backup slider. And he'll throw to lefties every once in a while. And a knuckle curve. Little ground ball hit toward first. Eric Carroll steps on the bag. And that retires the side. The Cubs get 16 runs in the last two innings. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. 21 to 20 to 1 Cubs lead. Carl Malone broke down racial barriers in Utah, only to be attacked by the people he thought of as his own. People say, oh, Carl's an awful time and all this. Carl Malone, Beyond the Glory, tomorrow at 8 on Fox Sports Net. It's a shootout between AL Power and Frank Thomas is the Sox power source. A-Rod leads the Rangers high-priced offense. White Sox Rangers, tomorrow at 1.30 on Fox Sports Net. Come on. Hey, looking for a ride here. Ooh, that's nice. Come to Papa. Oh, man. What is that? A Corolla? Oh. Ooh, Daddy likes. Oh, baby. The redesigned 2001 Corolla. Oh, yeah. It's more fun than you think. Oh, well. Hello there. Oh, every time. Hey, 
<laughs> Call on a few pals. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. Hey, guys. Hang it out. I'll hang out. Rattle, rattle, thunder, clatter, boom, boom, boom. Now at CarX, save big on Monroe shocks and struts. Buy three, get the fourth free. CarX, more than you thought, for less than you think. Don't worry, call the CarX man. Our producer of Cubs baseball on Fox Sports Net is Bob Albrecht. Our director is Dave Turner. The associate producer is Joe Corneo. Our stage manager, Christine Charbonneau. Our production manager, Moheen Ramsey. And the executive producer is Dan Lafferty. With Dave Otto, Chip Carey, we go to the ninth inning. Augie Ojeda takes over at second base. Order restored in the game, but when you see the Fox box, you won't believe it. Twenty to one. And Green hits a screaming Mimi into the seats foul for strike one. Again, the last time the Dodgers allowed 20 runs in a game, May 20th, 1967, also against the Cubs. Again, held the Los Angeles team to a paltry one run on six hits. 1-1 one, one count to Green. Duncan changing speeds very well. Especially the left-handed hitter is able to throw that almost like a screwball low and away to left-handers. Looks just like a fastball. Great arm action. Green is 0 for 2 today. Ticket it to the upper deck. Again, the Yankees beat the Orioles 5 to 2 today. Andy Pettit with a big day. Derek Jeter a steal of home. And uh, former Oriole Mike Mussina goes to the mound tomorrow looking for a four-game sweep. Ground ball toward first. Good play by Cooper. A flip to Duncan who does his job. One away in the ninth. Mets beat Arizona today. Glendon Rush with five hits over seven innings. He also drove in a run. Here's Eric Karros. One ball, no strikes. You know, Sandy Crum, the assistant trainer. He <laughs> might be the most nervous man in the ballpark. Oh. That's driven by Carroll's to right. And playable for Sammy. Two down. Well, if you're a superstitious team, Sandy was tied up earlier before the game in a shopping cart. Will the Cubs do it again? <laughs> See him tomorrow. You see him with that helmet on? Well, at least it's the guys were kind enough to give him some protection out there. <laughs> Two outs for Dave Hansen. During batting practice, put him in a shopping cart with a helmet on? Oh, my. Bet the wind was blowing out for that stat you saw at the bottom of July game in 1945. Today the Cubs with a 19 run difference. On their way to continuing to own the best record in the National League at 18 and 11. Two balls one strike. Don't forget series wrap up homestand wrap up tomorrow. Barre against Gagne. A whole lot of smiles on that Cub bench and in that Cub clubhouse today. It all started with a great Julian Tavares outing. He struck out a career high eight in seven innings. And the Cubs got Darren Greifert with two two run homers. And that's ball four inside. First blemish on Duncan's pitching line today. Hanson coaxes a two out walk. And that'll bring up the Dodger catcher, Pena. 
for Tavares early on in this ball game. Really pitched out of some jams. Take a look at Courtney Duncan here. May have hurt himself a little bit. On that last delivery. That one popped up by Pena down the right field line. Sammy giving chase. He can't get there. And it's strike one. He's limping around down there like he may have landed awkwardly and twisted an ankle. You can see him grimacing out there. You know, one of the problems that a reliever always has to deal with coming into a ball game is sometimes you're thrown into a different you know, a hole gets formed where you land, and if the pitcher before you lands in a different spot, sometimes you land on the side of that hole. Mile high pop up. That's going to do it, folks. A very happy Cinco de Mayo for the Cubs. White flag time, 20 to 1. Your final score. The Cubs win their seventh series of the year. Courtney Duncan finishes it off for Julian Tavares, who wins for the third time. Darren Dreifert takes the loss. He's now one and two. And Dave, we said it before, we'll say it again. The Cub offense finally exploded today, and I think they're back. Boy, hitting is contagious, Chip, and everyone getting into the act today. But another key, Julian Tavares early on, pitching out of some jams, both in the second inning and the third inning. The Dodgers leaving two runners on in both of those frames. Tavares all year long has been able to pitch out of those jams. And boy, facing Darren Dreifert, who's got great stuff, able to get a couple pitches upstairs, and that started the hit parade. But again, if you start with the starting pitching, it's Julian Tavares with a career high, eight strikeouts. The changeup really at times was unhittable, so was the slider. Boy, against left handers, nasty with the changeup. Then the right handed hitters dot in the outside corner with the fastball and making a big pitch here to Carroll's with that slider. Boy, and that, I think that's the big difference with Julian Tavares this year, able to throw that change up in counts. A lot of confidence, confidence in Todd Huntley to knock the ball down when it's in the dirt. Well, Dave, the big sluggers are going to get a lot of the headlines for this ball game today, but the guy I'm happiest for is the guy that's joining us down on the field, Damon Buford. I'll tell you what, partner, you have approached this start of the season in maybe the most professional fashion anybody has. You're breaking out of it, man, and I, I'm just happy to see you smiling out there. Congratulations on a big day. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, things are kind of turning around. Uh, you know, we're playing good baseball as a team, and, and that was the, uh, probably the most rewarding thing of, of uh, my personal start early in the season was that we were still winning as a team. What was going through your mind when you were in that terrible offensive rut that you were in? I mean... Uh, a lot of people were down on you in this town, and you keep hearing the name Corey Patterson, Corey Patterson, but now you're starting to fight back all of a sudden. Well, hey, at first, there's a lot that goes through your mind, and then, and then it just kind of goes blank, and you're out there just kind of like you're in the wilderness. And, uh, you know, all I can do is keep on swinging and, and uh, hope it would click in, and, and right now it seems like it is. Boy, damn, it looks like you're really seeing the ball good, but the one thing that I've noticed, you've taken a couple high fastballs in the zone, and you're really getting on top now. Yeah, we... Um, we worked, worked on my mechanics a little bit. I think the, uh, like, like most of them usually are, it was more physical. And uh, all, all we can do is work on the mechanics and, and working with Kenton. It's uh, helped a lot. And to your credit, Damon, whatever was happening offensively, you didn't allow that to carry over to your play defensively. I mean, you are one of the best center fielders in the National League, maybe all of baseball. Do you take pride in that fact? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it, it's been a struggle my whole career hitting in. And, and, Luckily, the thing that's kept me in the league and got me to the big league is defense, so I always take pride in it. I've got to ask you one question about Mac Newton. He's here with the ball club giving everybody their, I guess, 200-inning tune-up, as it were. What has the influence of Mac Collective? An uplifting person um, who's just real positive to be around, and, and uh, just being around someone like that, it, it, it uplifts you. And, and Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it, it's been a struggle my whole career hitting, and, and uh, luckily the thing that's kept me in the league and got me to the big league was defense, so uh, I always take pride in it. I've got to ask you one question about Mac Newton. He's here with the ball club giving everybody their, I guess, 200-inning tune-up, as it were. What has the influence of Mac Collective? An uplifting person um, who's just real positive to be around and, 
and uh, just being around someone like that, it, it, it uplifts you and, and